Well, we got Fnatic here. Boys, how are you feeling? Again, you're in another finals. I mean, you're playing against Na'Vi. I feel like you should feel confident in that matchup, but I want to hear from you. Or Envy, who you would like to get some revenge on. So what are you thinking about your potential opponents? Uh, I think both opponents are strong in their own regards. So whichever one wins, uh, we're going to be happy to play them again. Yeah, like for us, it doesn't really matter who we play. They're both really strong and they both have the strong sides. So for us, it's like whoever we play, we have different refs against both teams. So we have potential just to have the straight up Vegas rematch again. You guys are going to be a game up no matter who you end up playing. Uh, but if you do go against Envy and you do maybe lose that first point or that first map, are you guys going to be able to bounce back this time? If we lose the first map, it's still a best of five. Then it's just they get a best of five as well because we have a map ahead. Like in Vegas, in Vegas we underestimated them a little bit, but it was really bad from us. But this time we're not underestimating them. You know, I, I got to say on Championship Sunday, it's just different. You guys are the, you know one of the only teams left. A lot of teams are not even here in the building right now. Um, you know, what does it feel to have the success? Is this enough? You guys said you wanted all the lands this time, and, and you got the Spring Finals, but is it enough to go home second place again, or do you feel like you need to win? I feel like we need to win both to prove ourselves that we did the right adjustments and then that we know in which direction we need to go with the team. Yeah, we are not happy with the second place. It's like last place for us. <laughs> Game first, you're last then. <laughs> Uh, watching the set between Envy and, and Navi, obviously you guys will, will be going second today. I, is there anything that you're seeing that's surprising you today so far? Uh, both teams seem to adjust the draft a little bit compared to what they used to do before the tournament. But that may be just because they play each other, so they've found something against each other what they want to use. But we will see if, what they do against us in the draft. You two are pretty much some of the oldest Paladins players in the history of the eSport, in the history of the game. And I want to just talk about what it means for you guys to go from D69 days uh, up at DreamHack Sweden to here. Or you two specifically, um, you know, the camaraderie, the journey you guys have been on. What does it mean to, to be here now still successful? I mean, it's, it's really nice to have uh, Gera, kind of like a friend uh, from the beginning of days. Uh, he was actually not on my team until like the last second before the landing, after the qualifiers. Um, so we just needed someone that's more flexible. Uh, so we just picked up Gara, and even even though he's supposed to be more flexible, he only played Barak in a tournament. <laughs> so hey, oh, stop damage, <laughs> stop damage, Barak. Uh, but it's yeah, a it, dark it, time. It, it feels nice to have uh, someone on, along the entire journey from the beginning. All right, guys, thank you so much. Good luck today in the finals, and uh, we we'll hope to see you there. All right, thanks. Thank you. Later. Now, often in competitive paladins, we kind of go back to the same book, different chapter. I feel like at this point. We can write our own book with the fanatic Navi. And speaking of books, we've got Fifty Shades of Grey up here on the desk. How about that, Gore? I feel like we've got a... It's like a nice transition. Yeah. yeah it's pretty, pretty, We're pretty good. We're our there. own Crayola box. We are. <laughs> if you're buying Crayola... <laughs> three smell just as good as a fresh box of Crayola. <laughs> specifically for Grey, you just get one box of three Grey crayons. And we're the three representatives of it? Sure. All right, cool. Who's slate and who's, like, pale and who's... I like the ring of Gormizer Grey. I'm pasty. Grey. Excuse Gormizer you? Gormizer Grey. I like that. And I like uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> the EU pale gray. Well, we got Shift, we got Gore, we got Vox. We'll be hanging up the desk for the finals for you guys. And, well, again, let's just start with overall reactions, Gore. Again, Fnatic Navi, Fnatic Navi, what are your general thoughts on this I mean, this it matchup? happens so much. I feel like every thought kind of changes each time these guys have gone against each other. Wednesday, it was like, man, these guys are going to be close. Every time they clash, it's just going to go all the way. And then yesterday, it was just like, stomp, 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 smack them down. Fnatic, as of right now, just look like a stronger team. In all honesty, the one thing that I saw throughout Fnatic yesterday was Fnatic do nothing but go ahead and draft the Inara, protect the Inara, get their solo frontline online. And that seems to be something which Na'Vi have taken control over in this last set versus Team Envy. So I'm actually confident they'll be able to put up a better fight than we saw yesterday just based on the fact they seem to have adapted to the way that Fnatic was playing to be able to demonstrate the fact that they can utilize that as well. And Vox, we're talking a lot, uh, me and you personally, about the uh, the power of the Inara. When you go back to the Spring Finals, that wasn't so much the case. Is the Inara really, do you think, the momentum changer when it comes to these frontline battles between these two teams? Well, I feel like the Inara specifically is just able to stay alive for a long time, right? That's kind of everything that Inara does, but the way in which players have changed their loadouts, we've gone from more of a treacherous ground Inara back to a Mother's Grace, having that extra damage reduction, the crowd control immunity, as well as the self-heal coming through from your uh, channeled... Of 
of Earth and Guard as well. That's what we're seeing in every loadout. It's max healing from Earth and Guard, max uh, cooldown reduction of Earth and Guard as well. And it's just an incredible thing to be able to utilize to stay alive without the necessity to be pocket healed the entire time. And this play here, I think, with Unbelievable getting the, the wall up, and it was the commander's grab before that. You know, over to you, Gore, with this con pick. We heard the value of it that Na'Vi seemed to have with it. Is this something that might also potentially change the tide of these games? Uh, it's one of those things that yesterday when we actually were watching them, Na'Vi, when they were up against Fnatic, the best time they had was when they weren't running that double front line. Yeah. So it was really kind of weird to see it, I want to say, resurge the way it has. It feels like it's comfortable, but Fnatic know how to deal with it. Khan is really good at augmenting the Shala and the Cassie. Like, get that extra damage online, similar to a Genos, but at the same time, its kit is something that Na'Vi, I think, are the only ones that so far have been able to show the most prowess with. Envy was up there, but it's just, you have to play him in the right positioning at the right time, and if you take one step out of line, he's gone. And speaking of players that have really kind of let us know how important positioning <laughs> is, Phoenix has done it so often on front lines, but how about these plays in the last 24 hours with Phoenix playing things like Leon? We saw him playing Shaolin. I mean, he has been absolutely all over the map no matter what he's playing, and you guys have both talked about just generally how this triple DPS has been the big stout wall that Fnatic has brought to it. Do you think that with... If Phoenix kind of flexing back over to these damage dealers, that he can start to give Bugsy a run for his money on these uh, flex frontline damage rolls? Absolutely. Phoenix is one of the best frontliners currently in Paladins with his ability to play so well around the rest of his team. The ability that, and the knowledge that that gives of how to best position, it makes him a formidable DPS player right now. He's got a different champion pool to Bugsy, whereas Bugsy will play more of the flanker, maybe some Drogas in there as well, as that's the old mainstay pick. Maybe some snipers. Phoenix focuses more on mid-range picks, so there's a, a bit of a difference coming through there. But again, there's so much emphasis on this very careful positioning. Yeah, and again, just really smart usage, I would say, generally of his cooldowns, his abilities, able to get confirmed kills with the overpowered time and time again, and also almost dodging away. He almost had the battle shout up <laughs> for that through time and space, and that would have been absolutely pog champ. And I mean, when you take a look at just <laughs> this is again, this is a hot replay, hot take here. With Phoenix, uh, I was wondering if he was planking initially, but this looks more like a uh, looks like a penguin slide. I'm wondering where the is, suit is. <laughs> This is the true warm-up of a champion oh, okay. that comes through. You know, you have to make sure that it's not just, uh, you know, your hands that are ready on the keyboard, your mouse is warmed up, you're ready for the flick shots, you're ready to literally pull anything that you might have to. So getting that arm workout, trying to match Thiel, you know, yes, the biceps. It, it's hard to match Thiel's biceps. <laughs> Those things are a creature of its own. Uh, it, it, let's just, okay, we've talked a lot about the frontline value. We've talked a lot about the Mave. Let's go into something a little bit more different. How about these late draft picks? You know, as far as the bans go, in every single game we've seen so far from these two teams, we are seeing the Ruckus and Makoa ban. So as you take a look away from frontliners to these kind of tertiary damage dealers, you know, everything besides the Shaolin, the Cassie, when you start to deal with Drogos, Bomb King, damage-based Pip, yeah. where are those kind of influences coming from as far as synergy goes for these two teams? I mean, one of the things I think I've noticed is a lot of them heading for that ability to kind of stay alive a little bit longer, as well as, you know, Shaolin and the Cassie, the Drogos, is a little bit more burst. But then you start looking at, like, where's Buck? Where's Zen? Where are they coming into this? And there is, we're trying to prolong the game to make sure that if things don't go well for the other damage dealers or our front lines or whatever, we can get on the point, we can hold on to something just a little bit longer, try to make sure that the game goes more in our favor. Our respawn timers aren't as bad for us. I feel like often it's very map dependent as well, where we'll see these tertiary picks coming in in a different sort of stagger based on what kind of map we're playing on. We'll see more prioritization over stuff like the Shaolin Cassie on maps which have more open sight lines, but where there's a lot more terrain cover specifically, we'll see the Buck, we'll see the Zin, primarily because they paint a big target on their back and say, hey, I'm dangerous, look at me, shoot me, and that just draws attention away from the rest of the fight going on. Yeah, and you mentioned the Buck. That's, I'm glad you did because Jaguar Falls is where we've seen most of Buck and, of course, Serpent Beach as well. So tell to me more, I mean, for the ranked players out there that want to start getting into Buck, <laughs> where is Buck successful? Where is he not successful and why do you choose him? It's a really interesting one. You know, Buck actually came sort of into the more, I want to say, quote-unquote, modern meta as a more of a counter to airborne champions like Drogos has come in and out of popularity based on the ability to use bulk up more popular uh, or bulk up more well right now. But... The way that we're seeing bulk, uh, Buck played primarily in the current meta is massive damage reduction. It's less focused on the ability to chain kills together. It's more focused on using that bulk up with the uh, Deep Breath card, as well as using a card which grants you damage reduction following your heroic leap for four seconds 
be able to provide uh, just a, again, you paint a big target on yourself and say, look at me, shoot me, but if a Cassie tries to hit you with max damage reduction on you, she'll maybe deal 380 damage per shot or so. It's a really good way to distract your opposition, so if you're trying to get in and play this in ranked, first of all, you might have a bit of a difficult time because that relies on a strategy which has more coordination, but play tanky, play survivable, play around positioning, but never uh, necessarily leave your escape on the wire. It sounds like what you're saying is if you want to play Buck, you need to have a team. What? Ranked? No. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> depends, not. I guess, on who you get queued up with, but sometimes it just doesn't feel that way, does it? <laughs> you know what? You're not wrong, Gore. <laughs> Let me tell you firsthand, especially at the World Championships, everyone's like, buck, buck, buck. I'm going to get up there and play some myself. And, and then they jump in the so back, well. and then yeah. they die, and, and then <laughs> they flame you for not healing them enough, and exactly. then you cry because you're left to support everything. Well, game. it's the same thing. You don't jump in 1v5, right? In the same way, the professional players don't usually jump in 1v5, except we have seen that happen a couple of times. This tournament doesn't go down too well, but if you've got the back up, sometimes that's what's necessary. If you see the opportunity to jump in and use an ultimate like Buck Wild as a cleanup, uh, a cleanup potential, you can maybe execute that with the support of your team. The big thing that differentiates that sort of ranked play style from professional play is the fact that you have positive pressure from damage coming from all directions in these fights, mm. especially triple DPS fights. Yeah, that's a, especially triple DPS fights on open maps. Again, we talk about it so often, you know, to try to look beyond what's just on your screen. Where is all this other damage oh, yeah. being funneled in from? But more importantly, as you take a look at Spunky on screen, is how do you counter out all of that damage? I mean, Jera and, and Spunky have been absolutely lights out. Even Mr. Hayes in that, what, what we'll call it the third place matchup, looked absolutely incredible. So as a support player, Gore, I'll put this to you first. What does it take to be able to know when you can commit to helping a team fight in your actual playstyle versus staying alive and playing more passively? That's actually been, I think, one of the things that Envy was really struggling with, trying to get to the healer in Na'Vi. When yeah. they were standing in the back, because Spunky's just sitting in the back the entire time. He's playing as safe as he can, and it's one of the things I think Cus a few days ago had mentioned, that he was playing passive in one of the games that he had a very stellar performance. And I think that's kind of the role that they've kind of gone into is, okay, Maldama, you can do a lot. Your ult is really useful. Your stuns are great. But at the same time, you might just want to sit back, let yeah. the damage dealers take all of the brunt of it. Your focus is, in that case was unbelievable. Just keep him alive, keep him going, and everything will be fine. So it's kind of interesting to see when they do want to get aggressive, but I feel like it's mainly when those like Dread Serpents or any ult that might be impactful is up, that's when you get in. And it's the kill potential as well, right? Fox, we see Evil Mojo from Random Noob, although he's not playing it as a support. He's able to stay alive, get a couple of kills. Mr. Hayes with a couple big through time and space. And as we go to Stone Keep, it looks to be... Uh First and foremost, again, it might look a little strange on your screen of why that first map is empty. Since Fnatic came through that winner's bracket and won, they will get a one map lead in this best of seven. So Stonekeep is first and foremost. We talked a lot, Vox, about how Maeve sometimes has a tough time getting into those tight corridors, but more specifically, how those supports also have a lot of cover and they can be very elusive at the same time. Absolutely. Stonekeep is a very peculiar map because you have very tight corridors, very tight spaces within your cathedral. However, you have a lot of open space in the map and that's what we've seen be the primary counterplay to Maeve. We see this on maps like Stonekeep. We see it on maps like Frozen Guard. We also see it on maps to a degree like Frog Isle as well where maybe your bow champions excel a little bit more. Maybe your Leon, maybe your Bomb King does as well with Royal Subjects just to make sure that you can bop them out of the air. And as a result, I still feel like Maeve is a very valuable pick here, but it requires why is a very different change in play style mm. to what these teams might be used to. And on certain maps, the only time Maeve has gone through with these two teams are on maps where snipers are banned away. So we'll have to take a look to see how this draft moves as we're just ready for picks and bans for Stone Keep. Again, just keep in mind, it is Fnatic up one map due to being through that winner's bracket. A very key note to keep in mind is I'm sure there's going to be plenty of questions of what this is only map one. Why is Fnatic up one map? And also one of those questions of, I mean, Fnatic is already looking solid. Why do they get an advantage? Well, oh, yeah. it's because they've been so <laughs> solid. It just makes it a Earned little bit it. more frightening, I want to say, for Na'Vi, because it's just, again, you're coming into this, and instead of having, I want to say, the typical, you know, double, or the reset that you would have if Na'Vi are able to win this, it's just, you have to win a little bit more. You have to be a lot better of a team to take this all the way to the end and still win it out. And that's kind of one of the big things I think Fnatic can rest and relax a little bit more knowing they have just that one little bit of advantage, a little bit of leeway to play with. Now to start off our banning phase, once again, we're continuing the trend of Ruckus and Makoa always being banned away, but it is also the Maeve being taken off. And again, we're in a situation where both snipers are available. We've seen a couple of teams bring out some instances of Kinesa Strix here. Do we anticipate possibly seeing that again, Fox? I really don't personally right now, especially with Fnatic drafting in Inara early on. We actually saw uh, playing, I, th I think it was G2 playing a Kinesa on Stone Keep into an Inara solo frontline. It's just very difficult to deal with. And in response, Navi, go ahead and pick up a Cassian Drogos here. 
And this is interesting, Gord, because last time we saw the sniper on this map, it was into a Drogos, and the Drogos actually won those battles more often than not. So why is Drogos such a priority here? I mean, his fuselage damage and the fact that his rockets with that little bit of a speed buff and being on LAN are a lot easier to connect with when you're going up against something like an Inara, potentially a double frontline, although with Fnatic, it's mainly been the solo. It just gives them a lot easier way to kill them one two shot maybe a support one to two shot maybe any other of the damage dealers so he's in this really good spot as long as he stays alive he is going to dominate but like you said there was a sniper in there didn't quite get the sniper job done and it's tough i mean the, the angles are just so hard drogos meanwhile is floating around all these buildings and moving in and out of platforms and windows all over the place is again this traditionally looks like the same setup for fanatics very stock solo front line Fernando currently hovered over here, Vox. We haven't seen much solo Fernando. Is there any particular reason why? Fernando just doesn't do quite enough here. And I was about to say, this is going to be a Maldamba alongside probably a Fernando. I would expect Na'Vi to run a double front line with Fernando Terminus here. But in choosing the Maldamba early, they do still retain that last pick potential in, in case they want to go triple DPS, in case they want to counter pick here. In response, Fnatic are probably looking towards an additional flanker. I would not be surprised to see a pit pick up here. Mm. They do need a source of anti-air, however. Leon and Droxus might be good choices here, for example. However, that doesn't seem to be typically the Fnatic way right now. No, we really haven't seen Fnatic pull out the Androxus all that often. In fact, we haven't seen much of Androxus really at all. The only times we do is when Envy was sitting there saying, well, what else do we draft? But that's traditionally <laughs> when there's more damages taken away. So, buck. yeah, we're going to see Pip first and foremost, and you're anticipating the buck, Vox. What well, about you, you Dor Gore? Uh, I, I anticipate it now. Oh, you know what? <laughs> you're a smart guy. I, I have a <laughs> feeling that we're going to be seeing a little bit of buck this game, and I actually really like it. Again, Zen, Genos, Pip, Buck, like the combos that they all have together and mainly keeping Anar alive and keeping the things they need to shut down Cassie Drogo's put down in the ground. It's going to be perfect for them, and we've seen Fnatic. Several members can run these champions like it's just nothing else. Now, the Buck, of course, we mentioned how good he is at dealing with the Drogo specifically. If you're Na'Vi here, Vox, do you think they need some extra burst mobility for a damage slash flanker to help deal with the Buck? The difficulty is solo Fernand uh, solo Fernando, the front line is a bit of an amalgamation of those two words there. Kind of sucks versus Solo and Nara right now. It's You just don't really deal enough. I expect the Terminus. The Terminus is what comes through. Na'Vi go with security here rather than anything else. And Fnatic go with, well, more of their core damage. The picks are all going according to the script so far, Shift. They seem to have adapted well from yesterday. Fnatic drafting a different style of composition to what they were taken down with, with Na'Vi picking the Inara, Cassie's Inshall, and Maldamba yesterday. And I'm excited to see how this one goes down. All right, so it's already a 1-0 for Fnatic. Who do you got in this game, Gore? I'm going to have to give this one to Fnatic. I think their draft plays to their strengths. Fox? I agree. Fnatic, hands down. All right, that seems to be thinking it's going to be 2-0 by the end of this one for Fnatic. Well, Nick, Evan, what do you guys think? Hey, I think it's anybody's ball game right now. Fnatic definitely need this hardware, but Na'Vi have something to prove. They have not beat them since attempting to do so, even trying to beat them at that illustrious Vegas land, but not really having the chance. So curious for me, the only game Na'Vi you know, took off Fnatic yesterday was, I believe, that 3 DPS on Stone Keep. They looked yeah. very good doing it. Obviously, different draft today slightly, but there was still a, a Phoenix pick open in the Leon. I think he played yeah. it pretty well against Envy, Shaolin, his other only other DPS that we've seen him rock was banned out. But that's going to be a big question going in this set. Is Na'Vi comfortable running the three DPS? We know they can do it, but I think there's an element of, you know, this is their scrim partner. This is something they're really comfortable, and I think they know and respect what this Fnatic team can do. So maybe they stick with their double frontliner for the majority of this set. And this is something that, you know, Fnatic have done so well. It's very hard to try and switch up to a team that's already rolling. But in many ways, Na'Vi are rolling as well. They've played... Uh, about five games already. <laughs> they today. all have the Tyra title <laughs> equipped. And they are. Uh, I Tyra wonder who's fans. doing that was. Phoenix probably influencing more than just uh, his muscles this morning after getting that workout on the player's desk. At this point, though, Fischeko firing away as well as Jera. It's a decent bit of aggression coming through from Phoenix. And now he's opening up the door for Mutu to fire some rockets. He's made so much space for Mutu to move around this, this gate house. And this is what I think Envy did oh. really well. Uh, against uh, the Maeve, shutting it down, controlling the space, so important. First pick onto Bugsy. It's a big deal. Not a sincere now, 33% on the objective and counting. Fnatic with a 1-0 lead based on coming through to the Grand Finals without dropping a set already. 
it will be their advantage. And if Navi can win this, it'll turn it into a best of five. Big jump there by Bittner, trying to find Mutu, but just can't quite get the dragon. Phoenix is there with the shield again. A little strange, you know? It's like after Fischeko dies, they go and they make a move. Navi holding down the objective. You maybe expect this a little bit. And Fnatic wow. need to make a move now. They play so fast, but they don't have the legs this time around. They're already down. Fischeko going in. Bugsy's fallen. Bittner has no cooldowns to keep himself up. I mean, and this is just uh, Fischeko not having that kind of day already. I mean, when he's playing the pip, was Bittner's playing the pip, it has been this game-changing scenario. Feel activates the Warder's Field. Excuse me. And the Warder's Field there comes in, and then the Mother's Grace. So he's got the, def uh, the defense, but not necessarily any cooldowns now to sustain this. He's going to drop, and it's going to be Navi's point to take home. Who would have thunk Mutu's Drogos would have been the uh, the factor? That's a difference maker. Set. Let's look at, at the slash lines real quick. I want to see what uh, KD is rocking. And he does look four, down at 4 0 and 2. And it, 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 wow. I mean, this is the problem, right? Deathless. Oh, oh, no, Zero kills died. for Fischeko, Nick. Zero kills for Bugsy. Uh, you cannot really have a, a composition with three DPS where you don't get any kills. Yeah, it's a rough start for Fnatic for sure. And, and the one thing I noticed uh, about Fnatic is that, you know, normally Guillotine Zin comes through when there isn't a Genos there to nice. support the Yomi. Yeah. Uh, but Fnatic. And uh, I will say they, they have, have succeeded with it. They've done this before where they run the guillotine with the Zen, and sometimes they'll run Yomi without Genos. Um, and it's a little bit interesting, but just a great fight and unfortunate in the way that those picks happen. It's like Bugsy, and then right as Fnatic are ready to fight again, Pacheco gets picked. And they're never able to really take a strong fight as five. And again, this is Navi coming from being warmed up. Fnatic still, this is their first point they played in a while. Bugsy actually gets trapped there thanks to Theo, and so he's like, hey, buddy, can you let me, can you let me through? Finally able to whirl and billow out. No cooldowns, though, just the ultimate. And he could go around the corner. Delete Phoenix, who's pressuring him out, and he's going to do it right there. I think you got to do it. It's like the free Dragon Punch. I think that's something Fnatic have to land every single time. Bugsy, if he misses one of those, Guillotine's in becomes a whole lot less effective. Mutu's searching for Bittner, and he goes over while Bittner comes through under. And they won't meet. Two ships passing in the night. Bittner jumps away as well. Mutu hasn't been very effective in this fight. And until another now. Dread Serpent from Spunky. He's so good at committing to these backlines who commit to him. He says, all right, you're going to jump in here. You're going to risk it all to get a kill onto me. Well, I'm just going to Dread Serpent. That's what an ultimate's for. Turn the tide of a fight. Big Fire Spit as well for Mutu. Navi are looking good. This is 37 seconds left on the clock. The Salvos lose big damage onto Bittner, but he's able to just bulk it up for the most part. Bugsy, uh -oh. the world doesn't get him very far at all. He runs into the wall. And Fnatic just making a lot of sloppy mistakes this first oh round. Oh my god, double tap to the extreme. Fischeko drops, and Nick, this is just not a good day for the Pip. I don't know what to say about this lineup. It's a good thing in theory when Fnatic have been performing. Yeah yesterday, but today it is not shown up the same way. This is what I'm worried about because it was so instrumental for them yesterday. And they, if they have a rough performance, we talked a little bit about this, is the ability to say, I just did something wrong. The pip was fine in this scenario. It is going to be fine again for us. Uh, I just made mistakes on it. And I think, you know, I want to talk about Na'Vi now coming out of the loser's bracket, having, I think, you know, a game under their belt, essentially, today. Right. They're looking warmed up. They're looking hot. They've had... Five games now to communicate with each other, to talk about Three, things that they two, are liking, aren't liking one. about every one of these champions. Yeah. Mutu's had a couple of games on the Drogos already. Fnatic coming in straight up cold. And I mean, just five more games, right? Five, five more games of experience just on this land client in, in, in the draft with these champions. Dragon Punch can't get used because he gets stunned out through time and space. Oh, turn oh. into a chicken. Fischeko deletes him. But here comes Daddy. He turns back around. He doesn't find a kill off of it. Unbelievable, though, is still alive. Killing spree for Spunky and he He's got the Mending Spirits onto the Stagala. But look at this 98% on the spite, and it's going to come right on wow. out to Unbe into the billow. Bugsy will survive for now. He's almost out of combat as well. He gets Dread Serpented, but he breaks line of sight. Thankfully, no follow-up onto Bugsy. It was Steel that Navi had eyes for. And he's got the counter up, and Phoenix going to the back line. He's trying to commit. Now with the Luminary Heal is going to help him stay in this fight. 24% for Nottis Finis here. It's a bit of a reset. They're going to tie it up here. Phoenix has been crucial in creating space in this back line and pressuring out Bugsy in these fights. But unfortunately, they're going to have to push back into a Dragon Punch from Mutu. I don't think Theo is going to be very long for this world. Mutu is going to be waiting in the wings. As soon as he gets back to point, he's just going to get taken off. Bugsy's really just fighting Phoenix right now. It's, it's kind of Fat Flanker versus Flanker. Flank Nando doing the job. 
uh, of anybody just as good. Bugsy gets low, has to billow on the point. 90% now feels still with the Earthen Guard, but he's got Brand, and that means the damage is going to come through flawlessly. And it's Bugsy who has just the only fighting chance, but Fnatic again, Nick. Look lackluster. Damn, he's almost able to get his ultimate off. Bittner's trickling in now. Fnatic don't look like they have the legs to stand up this time around. The two front lines from Nautis Vincere providing a lot of zoning, a lot of space. Unbees on the point, but Phoenix has been doing such a good job at keeping pressure on Bugsy. And they haven't been playing a ton of Fernando. You know, and maybe this is just a just a, a pacing. No thing. one really has. He's kind of definitely fallen off through the midway of this event. Oh, oh yeah. Completely. And I think it's basically because of Khan. He's had this moment where Khan completely? Yeah. Herbie. <laughs> <laughs> and the Immortal's ready too. It's really good against, you know, certain <laughs> things like the evil mojo, which you can't always anticipate, but when you do, big payoff. Buying a lot of time, and that's the thing that Fnatic don't really have with the single front line. They don't have time on the point. And they're getting a lot of headway made immediately. 153 left on the clock. Payload pushing past about 60% now on the objective. 3-0 start for the defending world championships. Not a sincere. This has been the final at Worlds. It was the final at the Spring Finals, and now it's the finals here at the Mass Event. These two teams go at it. Navi yet to win in the spring, yet to win in those finals against Fnatic. And Fnatic yet to really win except in this spring finals just a few days They've ago. They've yet to beat him since Worlds. So at this point, five months, you say maybe it's time. Maybe Navi have said this is our moment to finally claim victory in probably the biggest tournament here in this month of May. And I think, you know, Luck, luckily for Fnatic, they have a game up, and luck's not the right word. They earned that spot. They earned that game up. They earned right. that advantage here. Look at this healing chart, though. Spunky, he's kind of been crushing healers all day, no matter what he's on. And Yeah. What a great support, a big veteran guy. But I think Fnatic, it's good that they have this one game advantage. They can shake this this off as looking like it could be a, a quick 4-0 here for Navi. But if Ishekel starts hitting mid-air shots onto Drogos like that, things could start to get interesting. Four clumped around. You got to say Evil Mojo has to be in the plans. They need something big because they're looking at a reaction. Animate. They're looking at the pressure of a Fernando. They've got Mutu, who's full health, and Bugsy finds a big kill on the creatives there. So that's going to buy a little bit of time. And now he's into the back line. He's in the back of the minds of all of Navi. Mutu's falling lower and lower. And Ooh. now the power Ooh. siphon is Ooh. able to bail him out of a bad situation. He's getting a ton of healing. What a turnaround from Navi. What a play. That was simply unbelievable and it was unbelievable who made it with the power siphon just protecting his teammates slamming down that massacre axe onto the ground as bittner gets deleted into dust he doesn't feel so good and 10 seconds left feels just using every tool he's got but i don't think the stone spear is going to do enough it's the seismic crash to follow it up fanatic are popping ultimates they want to keep this game going they want to stay alive in stone keep this is their map not as sincere aren't supposed to be stomping them out here they want to turn this into a best of five evil mojo has to be used but it was used. They don't have that. And how the reanimate's going to come through. They're going for it. But Thiel is back. He's got the wall. Bugsy with the counter. They're going to stay alive. Fnatic fighting with their final moments of life. But will it be enough? Thiel goes down. Mutu finds yet another kill. He's been so impactful. The Drogos. He's going to get another one. Umbi swings for the fences. Spunky gets a run. And it's all clean up. Fischeko falls. And Navi claim a 4-0 on Fnatic's map pick. Simply unbelievable again. The final swing. The reanimate to apply the pressure to get the cooldowns. You can survive that, but then you don't have your wall for the next time. You don't have your Earthen Guard. You don't have your Warder's Field. That just forced Steel into a bad spot. And again, the Inara didn't have enough pressure in this map, especially with the Drogos able to fire down from the sky on her freely. I think the biggest change here for Na'Vi is the Mutu on the Drogos, moving yeah. Phoenix off of Khan. They have made big adjustments, and I don't know if Fnatic were exactly ready for it. They have to bounce back, and they were able to do yesterday, so I think we're in for a long one today. Absolutely. Best of five. Now it's tied up one-to-one -one apiece. Let's see what the desk has to say about how game one went. There's a lot of things to talk about. I think first and foremost, the fact that Na'Vi comes out and finds such a successful stone keep 4-0 I don't know if any of us were really quite expecting this start from Navi. I could have, if you had told me 4-3, 4-2, maybe, sure. but like just a 4-0 swing for it. It's like, well, these teams play each other all the time. Did not expect them to make it that simple. I guess the way they made it look, it was just clean. And in the past, Fox, this has been notoriously, as you mentioned, 4-3 in the uh, semifinals of the spring, and then it was uh, it went the way of Navi, or pardon me, Fnatic then, and then Navi won it just previously in the winner's bracket matchup. So what was the key to success here for Navi from you? Well, for me particularly, it was the fact that Fnatic drafted a composition which was based around their key ultimates. It was based around Guilt and Spite from Zinn. It was based around the evil Mojo, and Navi just didn't really give them the time to get them online. You expect Navi to go up maybe one to two points 
early game before those ultimates can really be used to swing momentum around, but Na'Vi just took an opportunity. They saw, okay, well, we can continue pressing here, and they didn't give Fnatic a chance to recover. It was all about that momentum, and they've just come off winning a set. Yeah, and that's that's really huge when we talk about yeah. just the fuel that they have, but let's talk for a second. Mudu. He did not look so incredible, at least the first time he played Jorgos against Envy. Here's a totally different story. And Gord, this is in the face of a buck. How did he manage to find so much success? I mean, one of the things is actually right there was a great example. It was unbelievable just making sure they stay alive. As long as Mutu was alive, he was able to just keep firing. But the thing is, is that you have one Inara on the other side. That's all you have to deal with to get rid of that frontline presence. Everyone else, for him, one, maybe two. At worst, three shots that you have to fling in their direction and with your Dragon Spit, I mean, that's going to be a guaranteed at least one hit. So you get rid of the Inara, you get maybe one or two of them, and it's just, hey, I'm sitting back here free firing. What's Stone up? cold looks for Mudu. And Vox, we were talking early on in this game about how Mudu was going to have to position to stay away from early exits and entrances from this buck. So talk to me about how important it was for him to stay in that keep during those point fights. So Moody stays in the keep. It's a very confined area. Fuselar deals a ton of damage, and if Buck jumps in, you basically get the chance to two or three shot them. That's really what's key. <laughs> it's less of the long range poke fights where Drogas is more susceptible, more of the, if you walk close to me, you're taking 1100 damage. Yeah. And that's dangerous. That's why we didn't see Fnatic play initially into the keep. But at the same point in time, uh, they, they try to throw a Zin up there early. They try to, try to throw a Pip up there early. The pressure from Phoenix on Zin was relentless this game, which really allowed Mutu to be able to kind of free fire without much flank pressure at all. That's really huge. Uh, and let's talk about flank pressure. Flank Nando. We've finally seen <laughs> Fernando come out. Navi now is sitting at 3-3 three and three overall against Fnatic using the Nando just this weekend. They're up to a 2-1 and one record using Nando and Terminus together. Is this something we might be able to expect more of from these guys? Yeah, it's just one of those things. Fernando as a frontline, it's easier to get rid of his shield right now. So if you're trying to just soak up damage, it's not going to work as well. But then you think, well, still has Brand, still has a fireball that you could get up to three second cooldown if you really want to unless yeah. you're running a movable object so you can just go around the side that's free 500 damage every three seconds and that's assuming you only hit one person if you're running scorch most of the time especially on maps kind of like stone keep like jag falls you should be able to hit a couple of them every single time it makes it a lot easier for your damage dealers well this is interesting to start things off the mave ruck is taken away terminus is the response from navi so you would figure at this point it's going to be a makoa ban now again vox we talked a lot about the importance of inara with these frontliners all being banned out, should we be anticipating seeing solo front from both both these squads? If anything, I would expect Fnatic to maybe look to pull out a Barrack if they go for solo frontliner here. But with the fact that Barrack by themselves versus Inara is often a highly contested pick uh, in terms of Inara being able to force them off the point, in combination with how well Na'Vi prioritized the Drogos earlier, I would expect Fnatic to go, honestly, we're just going to pick up maybe a double frontline, maybe whatever is left at the end of this draft and prioritize the damage picks overall more uh, more frequently here. So again, Fnatic have the Inara that they're facing into. Mudu played an incredible Drogos last round. I wouldn't be surprised to see that go the way of Fnatic here. Uh, it's yeah. going to be a Drogos first and foremost for them. Again, we talked about the instant deletion possibility, especially against the Inara. The Zin also coming out. Does this seem a little early without having the Genos so far for you, Gore? I think it fits just fine just because of the map they're at. Jaguar Falls is a little bit easier for Zen, no matter what, to get a lot of damage and be safe without having to worry about too much. But it does kind of, again, I want to say show your hand a little early. Say, look, we if we get Genos, then... We're going to be completely happy just because Drogo's buff, Zen buff, and allowing that healing passively through everything. Well, if I may, one of the things that we've seen come through so far is Fnatic running a guillotine Zen when they have Drogo's, but mm. sticking with a Yomi if they don't, they're confident yeah. in the burst damage coming through from that Yomi strike to kind of be enough that you don't need the Luminary buff here. So, in all honesty, Fnatic might be able to get away with running a pick like a Grover on this map quite easily. And how about this Cassie coming out in the fourth overall spot? Na'Vi has gotten Cassie more often than just about any other team so far, and they're going to be able to mix that up with the Shaolin, and this is what I was a little bit more worried about. The double bow comps have been more successful than not. Is this... I mean, you get to be feeling good if you're Na'Vi here. Yeah, it's interesting to see Cassie. I feel like she's been relatively high priority for a majority of this tournament, either banned or first pick most of the time. And it's in that area where sometimes she was stellar, sometimes she wasn't. But once she gets paired up with Shaolin, if you grab a Genos on top of it just to have that little bit of damage amp as well, it gets a lot easier on this map to pincer people, get them kind of two shot technically from one than one on the other. So you can just kind of get into a better positioning, I'd say, as Shaolin and Cassie to make it a lot harder for front lines. Uh, of course, those walls adding that kind of sixth man feel to it when that impale does connect successfully. So a lot of burst, a lot of quick damage coming out from Na'Vi. 
And uh, again, they're looking for a healer here. We've seen them pull Saris out before, but it's going to be Genos this time around. Talk to me more about why we're not seeing Saris so much here, Vox. Honestly, probably because Navi are going to run a Khan last pick here, and that's going to be a, almost a spot pocket heal. So they draft the Genos Khan. At that point, you're either looking at a Genos Khan, or you're looking like a Saris Talos maybe at some point, because you're able to burn down the Barrack Shield. And Fnatic going for a last pick Pip here, which is hovered for the time being, which is one of the opportunities or one of the options they have. For me, it's Pip or Bomb King here, and I feel like playing into the double frontline, Pip is a little bit more reliable, especially because Khan can immune some of that damage and crowd control with that battle shout. Pip just fits better here. I absolutely agree, and again, we're not seeing Fnatic run double front ever. In fact, they've only done it twice against Na'Vi. Both times it ended in a loss. That being said, they've split games where they've had the solo barrack. Things are getting a little frantic for Fnatic. Evan, Nick, take us away. You know, the pip is really the keystone for me. That will swing how well Fnatic are able to deal with this lineup because we were looking at it and it looked pretty dang scary on the side of Navi. I think it'll be tenor this time on the pip as I well. Think so. That's going to be a pretty big switch up. He's been playing it a decent amount on Jack Balls and he's been moving so, so well. Fluid. That's what I think is going to be able to be more easily exploited this time around against. Uh, it's easier to flank on Jack Falls. This is a pretty immobile composition from Navi. That being said, I still think it's pretty damn near a dream composition for Navi. I mean, you can't be mad, right? You got a Cassie and a Sha Lin. Uh, playing off Khan, playing off Genos. Yeah, Ooh. it's like, yes, there it's it's a little immobile, but it's so hard to push because you could potentially be bursted for you know 2,200 damage easily. Exactly. The other thing is though height. Uh, I think mobility it, it is going to lean in the way of Fnatic, and especially with Fischeko oh God, dude. and Bittner. This is just a ton of damage. Desert Shadow with Luminary and Firing Line. I just, you know, I, I do really wonder, though. I think the real question is, you know, hit scan. They don't have any except for really Khan and Genos. So it's it's going to be swinging on Phoenix, And I think really also onto Fischeko and Bittner here, how well they can pilot these two blasters. I have to say there's so much uptime for the damage amp on Na'Vi. Fnatic just have to be really aware of it. Realize the, the time to kill is not going to be what they're used to. Theo already brought extremely low. Creatives misses his big bonus damage shot. Yep. And, and just sitting, waiting for an angle. But Bugsy he, got him. I mean, what are you really waiting for at this point? You're not being effective. Bugsy outweighed Mutsu. Now, how about that? That is a story for the ages, for sure. And now Creatives has a chance. Spunky finding Fischeko, and that's the one hit scan point. Oh, he lives. Bugsy gets the heal from Bittner as well. And look at this. They are also low. Bugsy, I don't, I understand why you're going there. He gets the counter kill. And now he's trying to whirl away into the damage. But it is going to just result in him pushing Na'Vi back. Not any more kills yet. And this is what I'm talking about. Again, we see it. So this time, they don't have Genos, but they run Yomi. Last game, right. when they did have Luminary, they run Guillotine. And I think that just speaks to how good at Zin Bugsy is. He doesn't need... Uh, those little crutches, those things to move him along. Whatever's right for the Zin against X Comp on Y map, that's what he's going to be able to pull. And I think, uh, you know, Yomi has been proven to be so good here. There's only so many places you can stand, and Bugsy gets another kill onto Spunky. He has been terrorizing this back line. They've got to have an answer. And Phoenix shows he is a hit scan answer for Fischeko. Mutu finds a double, and now it'll be two minutes and five seconds left on the clock for Fnatic to begin this push. But Bugsy still looms in the back line. They know he's there, but it's kind of an awkward situation right now. Spunky soon. is getting close to being under pressure. He's creating a lot of space. He's going to whirl away. Forced into the billow here. Might have to put his back <laughs> to mood two. He got the heal. He gets bailed out as well, but he gets void gripped up and doesn't want to burn his ultimate just to survive. But, there. dude, this is like the hardest choke to push. I mean, he almost single-handedly distracted them enough so that they could push this choke. It was it was definitely worth it. And it opened up some big plays. Fischeko, Bittner didn't take anything off that. They sacrificed uh, Bugsy for that opportunity. Fnatic with a little bit of shenanigans there. In the back line, Fischeko still getting poked out. You could see the focus. The frontliners are helping on a Fischeko. Uh, Spunky's helping on a Fischeko. Phoenix is helping on a Fischeko. They know they don't have a great answer for him, so everyone's contributing a little bit. And he can absolutely run away with a fight. Drogos on Jag can get so scary. The time and space won't find anyone. Creators misses a big shot on a Bugsy there. Allows him to get into Billow, but Phoenix cleans up Fishy yet oh. again. 1,400 from Desert Shadow and Luminary to take down Bugsy. And now he's got that con buff as well. This will be a big shot, but he misses that one. A couple of misses, Nick. Closing it out. Gotta be perfect if you're gonna want to take this W. That's a huge that's like a sixteen hundred damage arrow if he if, if all those planets can align. Yep. And that's just a big fat juicy number. That's you know the likes of which you really don't see very often. Three different sources of damage amp for creatives to play with this game. Forty seconds on the clock here. Fnatic not making great progress in this offense. Dragon Punch. It is ready. But he just wants to get in the right spot for Rockets. Look at that two of them. 
Two of them almost delete Phoenix there. He gets himself right back. Challenges creatives, and creative says challenge accepted. Finds him in the air. He gets two shot, man. It's just the damage amp, I think, playing against. He's not used to being two shot as a Drogo, so fairly tanky champion oh. in oh. mid air, and that's why. Oh, yes, not a hit scan, but it sure does feel like it sometimes. And Mutu's violent. Yeah, it sure does. He's uh, got everything you need to make this feel deadly. Fnatic at the point. Two but they don't get the point of pushing the point. It seems to go over their heads, and the defense will be successful. Navi looking very good still, despite not coming out as strong as first game. I think, uh, you know, that's pretty damn good for Fnatic, though. I, looking at, like, the suite of ultimates available to both teams here, yeah, Connell is a big one, but I actually like Fnatic's uh, ultimate lineup a little bit better. I think they hit harder on the objective, and they're all easier to pull off than what uh, Na'Vi have drafted. And without ultimates in the first round, they're still able to fight back against Inara and Khan with just a solo barrack. I think, you know, that's a good sign. And you know that, you know, let's take a look at this loadout here. Theo has designed his play style with Rejuve, with Haven. He's trying to survive a little bit. He's got double time, he's got bowling ball, he's got palisade, and failsafe is the big one is alongside Brave and Bull. He's going to get two rocket boots, and he's going to have them faster. He's going to get the bowling ball twice, which is a lot of shielding to go through, and he's going to have this cooldown of his shield up more and more often as a result of that Palisade card. So he's going to go in. He might be able Whoa. to get out, but he just he, he goes into the Warder's Field. Was that a misclick? A little bit faded there, maybe. A wow. four-man fire spit connects for Fischeko, but, you know, with Small Potatoes, Bugsy, he is under the microscope right now. Mutu forces him and just gives him a the Mutu look and <laughs> gets him to back up there. Spite is available. Oh, I like Mutu's it. Mutu's holding this angle. He is not going to let Bugsy through to his back line for free. It is just very hard, though, for anyone to really fight that. There's the overpower from Khan through time and space as well. Mutu on an eight streak, finds Fischeko, and he gets out of the skies just in time because the bow was looking at Bugsy in the back line. Phoenix, creatives, they get to, and not as Fincere have retaken this point. 80% now in counting. I believe Evil Mojo completely whiffed as well, so no value there. Fnatic will have a couple more. The uh -oh. Spite's going to whiff as well. Bugsy falls, and it's just coming apart for Fnatic. I mean, that first play by Thiel, you got to say, where? That was pretty what? what? Who, why, pretty what when? Face. <laughs> yeah, not what you wanted to see from your solo tank. Rocket bootsing into four people and dying. It's he got one of those explode. I get it. He was pretty healthy. I will give him that, but he just got exploded. Yeah, and I mean, maybe again, warming up. <laughs> it's game two. Uh, uh, Navi are on game six today. Game game six, I think. So, yes, you yeah. have to pay attention to this. This is a new comp. I don't think these three this close range have been played very often against Fnatic, so it's just something to get used to the timing of the kills. Yeah, it's going to be hard, too, because Khan's such a brand new character. So much damage amp available for Na'Vi. It's also a little bit hard to track when and where th certain things are, are playing into. You know, in the heat of the moment, oh, does this guy have Luminary? Is he going to hit me this hard or that hard? 149 left for Fnatic to figure it out. They've got a couple ultimates starting to come back online. Spite's getting close and Evil Mojo as well. And I love the patience, right? He actually waits to use that shout. Could get the immediate heal, and there's a big drop kill from his Bittner. Fischeko has to go big here, and Mutu just waiting patiently. Look at this. He's not even moving. He is not moving, and now he moves like a Terminator. Fischeko and him trade lives. That might be the best thing for Fnatic, because now it's two frontliners against the Zen Animal Damba, and Jera trying to heal up Bugs. He's going to keep him alive there, and unbelievable, now isolated. This will be a defense, at least for now, from Fnatic. Easy little stagger there. Fnatic will have a couple of moments just to talk over what they want to do, what they've got left in the tank. Four ultimates to work with. Heat Haze was a big one that used that didn't get too much, but there's always the overpower looming as Phoenix is headed upwards of 80% charged on that ultimate. It's just a free kill on a front line. And you know, Fnatic win round one, Nick, and, and so much of the way Theo plays and they play this triple DPS is like, front line, just, just give us a chance, right? Give our DPS a chance. It's not about you doing anything crazy, but a seismic crash here, and Fischeko taking down Phoenix has really helped to turn the tide. It's four people. Obviously, a defensive advantage is going to go to Fnatic, so Mutu's got a really outplay here, and that's a thing Mutu can do. Finds one, trying to find Bugsy here. He's going to whirl away. Can't keep track of him, and Zen will pick up the kill. And that's what I love about the three DPS, right? You know, Fischeko gets pushed out early, Bittner dies, but, you know, Bugsy's still there. Bugsy's still healthy. He just comes yep. in and cleans it up. There's so many win conditions for Fnatic with this lineup that they've drafted with the players that they've got. Deal. One of the best frontliners in the business. He really gives him the leg to do uh -oh. it all, but he's just been overpowered and fail safe. Rocket boots, bowling ball, none of it's going to save you from that. You know, and I don't know. Do they want to commit? I don't think they need to with That's the Evil Mojo. Pick. They just lost Spunky. So it's now, at this point, it's going to be very, very difficult. But he can't get back up. <gasps> Who has the angle? Mutu coming back? That's not good. He gets another one as well. And oh, Navi, no! they push it through. 
What looked so good for Fnatic there, Mutu just makes this beautiful counter rotation to punish all of the backline dive. I mean, uh, Fischeko doesn't even see it. Bittner doesn't see it happening. He doesn't even know. Bugsy does a great job, and I think that's the problem. They felt safe. They got Spunky, no healer. Okay, this is eventually going to go our way. And then bada bing, bada boom, double kill for Mutu. Game's almost over here. And, you know, it's 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 a question of... 12 and Does three. this get in Fnatic's head again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. To be up a game and then just watch it slowly start to slip away. And, then, you know, maybe a little bit of panic setting in if they're going down four, again in this game. 4 1 is two, not a 4 0, but it damn it looks close. Thiel as well. A oh, tinker in barrack. A tinker in barrack. You're going damage for that. You know, I, I mean, you, you may be better off running a defensive talent. If you're going to go 0 8, you got to pick something up. And I, we obviously saw the issue that they had last round. I think that's easy to reset. And they're really looking to pick off Theo. Look at this. And it's baited in. Phoenix, he's going to make it out alive, though. Theo tries to commit. He tries the Dome Shield, but he goes down first. Fischeko finding creativeness. But this dragon's going to have to do more than that because Phoenix just found his Bittner. It's a two for one. Void gripped up. Easy trades for Fnav or for Na'Vi there. there. Mudu finds yet another one. And Fnatic just go home <laughs> licking their wounds. They have the comeback mechanic. They have plenty of ultimates to work with, but they have to get back quick. I like that idea. Fnavi. Fnavi. <laughs> Fnavi or Fnatic? Who will win? Well, it looks like Navi right now. Unbelievable 0-4 oh, and 15. So you can't really say that's the stat tanks need. Heal just trying to hold space. And this Dome Shield, it's going to buy some time. This could be the big play they need. Big heal from his Finally. Bittner. Pacheco's still firing. 3 DPS alive. Phoenix has to be careful. Doesn't have the overpower, but he is going to power up Creatives, who's going to be hitting like a truck. But then his Bittner finds unbelievable. That could turn the tide. Just barely hanging in there. Bugsy that picks one it. up in the back line as well. He gets Commander's Grab thrown over. But frankly, back to his team where he probably wanted to go in the first place. Evil Mojo is starting to creep back up. Spite and Dragon Punch are both over 50% charged as well. Fnatic definitely have the legs to stay in this game for and, now. And you got to say the Dome Shield and then the heal from Bittner. That was the big change Finally for me. getting that off, too. And, and then, then all of them staying alive after that point. That was the crazy thing because, you know, fisheko has been trading with Mutu. Him and Mutu will die at the same time. Or Creatives and Bugsy will trade lives. Fnatic need to have that pressure if they're going to make this composition work. And that was the first round that they were able to get it back. Here comes the Seismic Crash from Unbi. He hits a Fischeko behind the wall, so nothing gained, nothing lost for Fnatic. 156. I want to take a look at the healing charts. I want to see how close this con stays. And look at that. That's oh. actually pretty impressive. The, the DPS pips, obviously, have always been talking about, you know, it is impactful. It's not a lot on the charts because it's not a lot of throughput. It's just those burst and critical moments. And I think Phoenix has done a lot of that, providing those to, you know, the Mutu and the creatives of his squad as well. Oh, yeah. Khan is, Khan is basically Pip. I mean, as far as healing-wise. Thick Pip? I mean, at this point, <laughs> Thick Pip, exactly. I don't know if he's going to, you know, be uh, running the circles of any online dating services for Volpines. I'm not sure people are into that. Khan might be a little too thick there. But uh, I'm not discriminating. Do you think? No such thing as too thick. <laughs> no such thing as too thick. Come on, you know that. Yeah, man. We're One, in the south here. <laughs> 115 left. Three ultimates for Navi, three ultimates for Fnatic. But I don't think anyone's really dying to spend those at the moment. Fnatic, they know even if they get the conversion, they'll put themselves in a weakened state and potentially losing this second game in a row. One minute left now. Two picks for Fnatic I, and no ultimates needed. I tell you what, Nick. Dragon punches not really made a difference here. I mean, can you think of one play that we've seen? Oh, wow. Big dragon punch changes the fight. Not quite. Kept them in it, but Fischeko's died every single time after. That's and, what I'm that's saying. That's perfect yeah. counterplay. I, I also see this shield from Phoenix actually really stunting a lot of the, the, the picks. Absolutely. And, and so Fischeko, I think, needs to either just swap targets completely, maybe stop trying to poke Phoenix down, leave that to Bugsy, leave that to somebody else whose, whose single ammo is not as important as Drogos's. It's a big shot from creatives oh, as that's well. Big. Up over the top to Salvo with the trade. Spunky keeps it equalized for his team, at least for now. One for one trade, totally in favor of the defense. And that's why Navi are just, just playing better, I think. They're, they're all having this issue with Fischeko. They're having an issue getting down this dragon. They do not have straight hit scan, but they're all contributing a little bit. Whenever he pokes his head, he's just not having the type of performance that they expect from him. Navi's having an M or, uh, Spunky's having an MVP kind of day for me personally. He's been crushing enemy healers on the healing charts, getting big ultimates, great void grips, as well as just having that that really DPS-minded nature of the support to be able to burn Fischeko down out of the sky, recognizing I'm a hit scan, you know, I can throw in some deeps here and make it happen. I like the little music we got going on out here. It's a little scratch. It's getting funky. It's getting funky in here. And his Bittner knows it. Passes the Dasani water bottle. I'm drinking a monster as well. 
keeping up with the brand. <laughs> Mine's purple. What is, How is this that one? Ultraviolet. Ultra it's kind of like uh, the fl you it's know. It's pretty wild. It's, that can art. It's nice. That's what made me want to have it. We're professional can artist. Ask me anything. Five, four. <laughs> that was nice. Two. That was nice. One. Nick joining in with the cod puns. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm all about it, man. I actually wasn't at all. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> a oh. con artist. Oh that's, my that's, goodness. That was the that was the best one. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't even have to try. Oh, Spunky doesn't have to try to get value. Feel goes down again. But maybe it's so early. I think Fnatic are just going to reset here. I think they're going to reset. But ideally, they want to get. They want the overpower to be the cause for the reset. Navi are still sitting on probably their best, probably the best ultimate in the game right now. Here oh, comes the Dragon he's Punch. Going for him. I mean, he. Mm, this yeah. is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Calls with it these. off. Big Dread Serpent. Bugsy's in the back line. But no one's really low. Well, you need to get Spunky here. And Bugsy is, is almost too committed. You know what I'm saying? Is that? Are you kidding me? That was overpower. Okay. It sounded like it. Hey, and I all said, is that another through time and space? How Sounds the heck did like that it. just happen? Spunky on a six streak. They've got to find a way. 75% for Na'Vi. Fnatic are falling. Creators with a double kill. Unbe with one more. I Whoa. think Na'Vi are going up to one. And let's be real. It's really 2-0 in this set thus far. In this best of five now, Na'Vi take the lead. And I mean, just looking so good. They all are. It's it's really tough to pick an MVP. All of them are doing such incredible things. Unbe's control. Phoenix is zoning. Mutu and Creative just killing people and not giving them any opportunities to make mistakes. And then you look at all the things Spunky was able to do. I just went over that list. I mean, this would be such an interesting story. Part of greatness is talked about not just what moment you have, but what the course of your career is and, and what you do during those lengths of periods of time. And and from Worlds to now, Navi have dropped the ball as far as getting the accolades they want, as far as the PPL, as far as the Vegas land, as far as the spring finals that happened five days ago. Fnatic have definitely been more of the Cinderella than them. This is Starting to yeah. feel like, oof, a storm's a brewing. And I feel like if you if you're gonna win one of these spring finals or masters, I feel like you, you want to win masters, you right? Want this. this is the international one. This is the event after spring, right? This is the one that's gonna leave the taste in your mouth that people are going to be remembering. And it, you know, you had to take down a lot of enemies again. You get revenge on envy and what they did to you. This would be getting revenge on Fnatic. Honestly, I, I'm thinking that uh, Fnatic are in trouble. They have to get Fischeko and his Bittner performing better on these pips, on these Drogoses. Otherwise, it is gonna be a rough one. Ultimate's not really connecting in a great way for Fnatic that time around. Like you said, the Dragon Punch had to be cut off at one point. Every single other one was traded out effectively. There was a couple of missed Evil Mojos, a couple of missed Spites, and when you're running that 3 DPS comp, that is, that's how you win the game, is by hitting all those. Well, let's see what the desk has to say. Game 3, now done. Or Game 2 in this set, at least, but it is 2-1 now for Navi. Well, you guys mentioned that Fnatic may be the Cinderella, but they're not looking like the most beautiful bell at the ball, at least not today. What went wrong? A lot. I mean, there was so much, like, small individual things, but really, for me, it just it felt like Barrick. It just didn't have the impact I think they wanted it to, and that was one of the big things for me that is just every time he showed up, the minute he died, Fnatic couldn't fight anymore. For me, personally, it was less about the Barrick, and sure, there were some misplays there, maybe, and it didn't pull as much focus far as uh, Sol and Nara can do. For me, it was Fnatic looking whiffy with their ultimates. I mean, I mm. pity the admin that's in the room with them right now as well, because whiffy has been the name of the game for this team throughout the tournament, but... The missed evil mojos, the dragon punch not yeah. finding anything. A lot of critical picks, which had an easier execution threshold for Navi because they just pull somebody off the map and throw them off the map with overpower, and then you're one and done, and Fnatic are fighting an uphill battle. Yeah, and fighting an uphill battle when you're not able to get the three DPS online, it, it, that's got to be really frustrating. Again, we talk about the pros and cons of Barrick. The pro being... Once he's set up, he's very hard to displace because yeah. he's got damage. If you put in the loadout, your healing turret, the healing station, you could get yourself self-sustained. But the con is you have to get set up. And speaking of con, how about a <laughs> particular champion displacing the barracks so often? I mean, it was just perfect. The way, again, that Phoenix likes to play this, the way Navi play this is just kind of you're standing on the side. Your primary goal is, I want to say more distraction factor than anything, is just you're going to buff up and get a lot of damage. And I think people have underestimated how much damage his gun does. Uh, you think? Especially when <laughs> they're starting to hit those headshots. Spunky and ringing is a the bell. Head. Yeah, he really is. I mean, I think the beard actually counts for most of his head hitbox. At least it should. Are you talking about Spunky or Barrack there? Uh, you pick. Both after that clip as well. <laughs> Spunky needs to be back on DPS at the moment as well. That's something which we were marking off this previous game. Playing the Genos, but also really participating in a lot of kills. Yeah, that's huge, especially when you consider the combination of having, you know, giving the buff to your 
friends and family. We'll, we'll say family. The luminary buff is so huge. But I want to hit you with a stat real quick. Now I'll let you guys take a conversation moment. Cassie after that game six and five. Shawlin after that game six and five. Drogos after that game three and five. Zinn before today was eight and zero. Oh. He has now fallen to eight and two in this head-to-head matchup. Is that where you see the biggest exploit for Fnatic? Not swinging well in those in. Uh, it was actually really weird because Bugsy was doing a lot of work for his team. It just felt like the follow-up was really where things fell apart. He'd get into the back line. Originally, he was finding a couple kills every time he went back there, but eventually it was, okay, well, we know what you're going to do. We see what you're planning. And honestly, you can't do anything. Even if you get two, three by yourself, your team has to do something with that space you've gained. Going back to it again, Fnatic's triple DPS composition relies on positive pressure coming from all angles. In mm. that Jaguar Falls game, because of the missed ultimates from the evil Mojo, because of the Dragon Punch not connecting, because of a lot of the damage being counted out by Khan's Battle Shout and held at range due to the bow characters on the side of Navi, there wasn't enough positive pressure. Bugsy was unable to do what Bugsy typically does on this Zin pick because they weren't able to free fire quite so much. So is that the big thing when you take a look? I mean, when you have the solo Beric specifically, he needs the space to set up, but Zinn needs the space to get aggressive. And on top of that, you need to find some kind of comfortability for the Maldamba so he doesn't have to use the Slither every single time. Was it just simply the fact that Jaguar Falls was just completely in control of Na'Vi almost that entire set? Honestly, for me, it's just all about that Barrack pick compared to the Inara. That draft would have probably pulled off for Fnatic so much better if they'd had the Inara. They also have a crowd control ultimate with her as well. In comparison, Comparatively, Barrack just doesn't really provide enough of what they need. He provides pressure in terms of damage, but that really is just about it. In all honesty, I would have preferred to see, if they're going to draft a Barrack in this circumstance, they grab a Drogos, grab a Zin, they grab a Barrack, don't draft the Pip. Draft a okay. secondary frontliner, draft something like a yeah. Drogos, combine Dragon Punch with Immortal, make sure that you're securing kills and getting out alive, not just trading out in favor of Na'Vi every time. Oh, but how about these shots, though, from, I mean, again, the power of the bow. We're taking it back to medieval times here. You ever been to medieval times, Gore? Yeah. Did you love it? I love it. I love it. Have you ever been to it's Medieval been Times? It's been a long Fox? time. What is, what, what is a Medieval okay. Times? You've never been to Medieval I'm Times? I'm British. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, Creative's in, uh, in, in able to get himself online with Shaolin so often. And again, a lot of these shots, and I think that's the big key. We talked about it earlier was the whiffing of the ultimates, but there are times where this Shaolin or Cassie independently sometimes are whiffing their own shots. We're seeing Creative's absolutely on fire right now. And, you know, whiffing those shots, that first game on Jack Falls with Envy, the beginning rounds that they were losing was because they were missing a lot of their shots. Once you get online and once you start hitting it the way Creative's is now, it becomes a lot easier of a game for you. You're hitting stuns. You're hitting them when they're up in the air. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter that you're not technically hit scan. You're hitting them just like you are. So now again, Vox, we talked a lot about how Navi, as we were about to head over to Serpent Beach for our technically third played map here, they have been finding themselves grabbing the Cassie so often. And yesterday, it wasn't working for them. So far today, two wins on two picks. Yeah, Cassie just provides a lot of great anti-flank pressure. The thing that I'm noticing this time is that Navi look a lot more coordinated. They're able to focus down Fnatic because they're uh, swapping targets very effectively. And they're also using terrain better than the, on the maps that they're playing on now mm. than they were yesterday. That's a really big element of it. You keep the Cassie more safe. You have the Cassie able to protect your support, especially. It's really big. Oh, protecting the support. I mean, maybe we're seeing some uh, Kevin Costner, Whitney Houston bodyguard <laughs> stuff going on. Is that a sports reference? No, that's the, it's, a, it's a cinematic <laughs> reference, Fox. Why does everything have to be sports? I like <laughs> that that is your number one question. Listen. It should be. I think. I'm you British. Know. What does that have to do with anything? I have no idea at this point. <laughs> something, something. But it's a good excuse, though, right? Something, something, something. All he has to do is say, I'm British, and everyone's like, oh, I guess we can forgive you yeah, for that. Something, I'm sorry. Something, <laughs> Brexit, something, something, cup of tea. Fnatic, though, taking away the Terminus here. This is a little bit surprising, but I love how Navi executed the Terminus on Stone Keep, and that's a really big element for me. It's very protective when you can kind of fit somebody inside of that uh, power siphon and just keep them safe from all offensive pressure. That's, and yeah, I, yeah. I, we saw it happen so often with the Navi Envy set where. You hit it on the head. That power siphon was used as almost an iron curtain, keeping people safe, speaking of bodyguards. And again, if we continue with the trend, we're going to see a ruckus band here. But nope. it's going to be Inara. So Inara. This, is, uh, this is our first yeah, like real changeup with, uh, with, the, with the draft. And with the Inara finally being banned away, how different does this go for Fnatic, in your opinion here, Gore? I mean, in this case, you grab Inara first, because if you want to run solo frontline, which is pretty much all they've been doing, Inara is the one that does it best. She's essentially two tanks in one. And being able to get rid of that, you kind of force their hand, say, okay, now you have to pick this unless you want us to have it. But Na'Vi don't really seem to care much about letting the Cassie go. They've been able to deal with it so far today, and they get Sha Lin, they get Drogos, which 
this is a great map for both of them. Yeah, and it's two of the biggest influencing damage dealers picked early. We'll, we'll say all three of the big influence damage dealers picked early as Fnatic obviously getting the Cassie. But so uh, again, Serpent Beach, not exactly the best solo frontline map for Barrack specifically. But Fnatic is 0-2 when they play double front Vox. I mean, what do you do if you're Fnatic, if you're trying to get in the heads of the players here? If you're Fnatic, you draft the Rockets, you draft the Fernando. They need to prioritize frontline here. They can't let Na'Vi get the best damage picks in game alongside the best frontline picks in game. And I haven't seen Fnatic really have a Khan like we'd expect, but Fnatic seem to be doing more of the same. If they draft the Jet on Sin here, I can't say that I wouldn't be surprised, but I would be disappointed to say the least. Yeah, I mean, how could you not be considering we'll that? We'll take 50-50, right? Okay. You can't win them all, Vox. Close, close. The Genos <laughs> is just also very good at enabling the Cassie. Uh, it's yeah. good at supporting the Fernando. You don't want it to go into the hands of Na'Vi as well. And Spunky has also played a fantastic Genos on the previous map of Jaguar Falls, where he's just able to really participate in a lot of kills, line up through time and space, and always keep that team topped off. You yeah. know, go ahead, Gore. You had been saying at one point that it felt kind of like both of these teams were just drafting what they want and then just seeing, like, just kind of going at a clash, mm. seeing who yeah. could actually come out. It honestly kind of feels to me as though Na'Vi's being, like, trying to goad Fnatic into picking certain champions just to take it away from them, and then just not caring about it. Boeing saying, hey, go ahead, take the Cassie. Go ahead, take Genos. Well, if I may, the big well, reason that Fnatic would have taken the Genos here, if anything, is because Na'Vi have played such a good dual support, yeah. I want to say, with Khan alongside this Genos, really supplementing that pocket heal like a pit when necessary. That's just far more survivable. So Fnatic right now, this draft feels scared to me in all honesty. They're feeling like they have to go into specific picks to avoid Na'Vi from getting them. It's interesting though, because Na'Vi take up the Barrack. And I think this really says that we're okay with Fnatic taking Ruckus away from us because we're going to want to play the Khan. Well, also you're going to fight Ruckus into Charlotte and Drogos, which exactly, is I stand which is never fun. Emitter, and then I die. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a really big key <laughs> when it comes to just overall burst damage. And of course, Drogos with that Fuselot rocket can instantly destroy some of that emitter shield. It will be Bomb King taken. So this is one of the first games we've seen in a while that have had both of our prime uh, premier blasters coming through. Ooh. And with that is a spicy, saucy Kinesa now, Gore, for you, was all this extra pressure with the long-range sniper and the kind of in-hand bombs, does that create enough space for this solo Fernando to go okay for you? I think it should. Honestly, with the way Fernando is, because he can do a lot of, I want to say his survivability is partially his shielding, but also just being able to poke people out. When you have that ability augmented with a Cassie, with a Kinesa, with a Bomb King, you're not the main focus. Your damage is going to be there, but they're going to pull to the side. You're going to be looking, where's Kinesa? Where can I stand? Not on the point. Not mm. with that Fernando. And if you do, then you're just going to eat way too much damage. Well, we were talking yesterday, Vox, about how there was one game in particular where there was no pressure on the sniper. And so Na'Vi, you feel like you're, you're forced to take this in here just to try to get into that back line and force Kinesa some uncomfortability. Exactly. If it wasn't a Kinesa here, you'd fully expect Na'Vi to be able to go with maybe the Rockets, maybe the Khan here. But instead, they recognize that they need something. Evie on LAN has proven itself not to really be in a prioritized pick so far. And the Zin is really the one which on Serpent Beach can also be quite valuable. Yomi will allow you to poke out this Kinesa from range and keep yourself out of danger more, uh, more often than not. And also, you're able to use your spike to traverse low to high ground, which can be critical at chasing down the Bounty Hunter. Now, for you... Or Fnatic have not won a game yet today. Is this where they turn it around? I think so. Those last two picks really, I think, flipped what Navi wanted right on its head. They're like, hey, we're winning, we're winning, we're winning. Oh, now we have a Barrack and we can only go solo Barrack. We have Zen and it doesn't really feel like it fits as well in our comp. Mm. Shalin and Drogos are still strong, but Kinesa Bomb King is just ridiculous. Fox, this is where Fnatic turns it around for you? I'm not confident that they can. Okay, well, Zin has not won a game today. Something that has not been the case is it was 8-0 previous to this in this head-to-head -head matchup. Evan, Nick, why don't we take us away? Well, uh, thanks, Alan. I think that uh, this is really fanatic, in my opinion, winning winning this draft with those last two picks. I think the Zen is not your it. ideal pick to try and flank a Knesset on this high ground. And I think if they execute it well, which is, has been their problem, I think they will be able to win this yeah, game. Yeah, and for me, even last game, Bugsy Zen wasn't the problem in my no. opinion. I think he was, Three, when two, they succeeded, he was one. the reason why. And then Let's every other game. scenario, when they failed, it was just like he wasn't able to do quite enough. Yeah. And I think right now you got a Barrick versus a Fernando. I don't I don't think they wanted that. Unbelievable he's here. And Phoenix is having to, you know, flex onto something that maybe just, you know, not not what his ideal situation would have been. And there's the first blood already on the creatives. Phoenix grabbing a great kill, but Bugsy finds another one. And it, it, you have to mention also, uh, Drogos not doing well with Kinesa. Absolutely not. And that's Fnatic, like, kind of winning that without Bugsy. He missed a couple of key shots there. 
and they still were able to take a W there. So that's giving me a lot of confidence. I love that this is, feels like Fnatic doubling down about Look what they're good at. That would have been a big one to hit, but he's in their back line now. Navi have to figure something out to get Bugsy out of this backline high ground. They don't have high ground chasers. No one can do it. I mean, this is this is Fnatic's draft. Like, I, I don't know how you look at this and you think this is uh, easy for Navi. This is very hard to execute. Mutu's going to have to play lights out, and that's a good start. Finding Thiel, 39% still for Navi, but uh, Creatives is not able to find the same pressure with Zin as he did when he had a Luminary on him. Unbelievable. Big, big pick big up kills. there on a Fischeko and his Bittner who find themselves out of place, and now Jera is running away. That's basically it there. I think that was, you know, no longer Bugsy's fight to win there it had to be fishy and bitner there that was an out all out brawl i think navi did a good job turtling up where there are very few line of sights for bugsy to work with ignored him and he kind of went you know useless for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds there and what i like what mutu's doing is he's really being a threat to the front line and that's the thing that bugsy's not doing he's being a threat to mutu but but mutu's being a threat to, to theal and theal needs to stay alive they have to have some damage contributing fisheko needs to drop there but fisheko hasn't won his duels today bitner hasn't won his duels today jera and bugsy cannot do it alone here this this is really rough for Fnatic as a start, and especially execution-wise, it, it's just not flowing. And this is where you get into that territory of, it, is this the slow decline for Fnatic here? They are given that game, but it's not earned, so it's not doing anything for them, for their momentum, for their mentality. They have to get something going here in this game, or I think the set's over. And now I think Bugsy is uh, in trouble because, of course, he already uses reposition, and, and Creatives has more than enough health to chase him out. He's just going to build. He says, all right, you probably had enough time to line up that headshot, so I'm not going to test you there. Thiel's getting bursted in. Again, great pressure from Mutu, who's really been a standout. You could have said Creatives. Obviously, at Worlds was the big-time player, but I think Mutu's been the most important damage flex for them today. That position is a little weird and I, I don't know I don't want fishy to tilt again he was super mad about his performance at Vegas it's not a great start for him today no one's been able to execute the pip and that's the biggest thing the pip was what changed for Fnatic it was yeah. looking so good and today it just fell flat on its face to where it's available and they're not picking it <laughs> you know, and I don't think you say that with the way they were playing yeah. that pit prior. And, you know, even Phoenix is having great duels here. Uh, staying alive against Bugsy, that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, granted, I don't think this was a great map to pick pit, but they really did not get something going. He what couldn't, is going Fishy on? Couldn't go. Tenor couldn't get it going. No one can get it going in this Fnatic backline besides Bugsy. But, Nick, my question is, why is Fishy down on the low ground fighting into tanks? Bugsy finds a triple kill. That's what started this conversation from here. He, he, he's picked out in, in that little temple room with Thiel's why? not even with him. Thiel is not that far out. Why are you that far out, Fishy? I, and you have high ground, and they don't. And so it, it, make them come up to you. Make them reposition themselves and get out of sync as a unit. Uh, throw a grumpy bomb down there. Your first pick is 0-4. On this Cassie, Tenor and Fishy have got to get this going. Bugsy is keeping them in the game. Yeah, and, you know, that's that's something that's going to tilt these uh, veterans. Hopefully not. They've been here a long time. He says he loves the camaraderie. Oh. He's really happy to have Jera on his team, even since the D69 days. But how, how happy can you be unless you're getting these headshots? There's a crit. There's a big one. He has to go huge. He gets the <laughs> double kill. He's looking to get the triple kill. Bugsy, are you going to do it? No. Unbelievable. Pushes it in. He shuts down the sniper at the last second and finds himself a trip. And boy, was that close. But no cigar for Fnatic. And how bad does that hurt, dude? I, I, I mean, Bugsy's a veteran. I think he's super experienced. I think he's matured a lot. And I think this is a pretty pivotal moment for him to now encourage his boys, his young guns. You Guys, got come on, boys. We got this. We're going we're gonna to hang out. We're going to hang in there. He, he's pulling fat weight right now. Yes. And if anything else gets going for Fnatic, they have a chance here. But that's it. That's and that's what's way. scary, right? Because you could see why Fnatic are so good, why they're in this position. Because um, Bittner and Fish, Fish aren't having good days right now. So if they do, I mean, Navi, watch out. If this Bomb King or this Cassie goes off, who's 0-5, by the way. And Cassie's not been a big pick for them in this tournament. Tenor hasn't played a lot of this Cassie. I almost... Holy crap. Okay, Jero with the big play. Through time and space. Gets things going. And now another one. Bittner shows up. First kill of the day. Fischek goes down low, and Spunky's trying to finish him off. But this time, Bugsy picks up the double. Fnatic have decided not as Fincier. Finally, just something gets going, but it, it's all the veterans there. I mean, yeah. Theo just makes the space. He li Jera. literally goes all in. Gera opens it up. Finally, there's so much to work with. I mean, Tenor and Fishy, there's a line where they, they, they simply couldn't go wrong with that yeah, much. Yeah, you just clean up connection, right? It's just no problems there. Phoenix, got to watch your dome. 
Jera here on a four streak. And Spunky was on a 15 streak. I'm not sure Spunky had died. That might have been his first death, to be honest. Fischeko has to pick up this kill here. The reload. All oh, the reload sucks. Come on, get it out oh, there. Oh, big Binds time kill. Mid-air shot on Namutu will be good. But was it too little, too late? 93% with the comeback mechanic. Just two more ticks for Fnatic on the objective, and they'll be able to get a payload. I, I feel good about this, to be honest. The, the shield is down for Barrack. A long-range snipe from Bugsy is going to apply some pressure. They don't have a lot of defensive things that just stay there. I think, I mean, unless they get Bugsy off the, the field right now, this is going to be tough. Thiel is going down. And look at this. Navi committed to just pressuring Thiel out, and that's the thing that Fnatic aren't doing. They're trying to flank. They're not bursting unbelievable down. They're just blowing him up. Phoenix just lets Fischeko go to the back line. That could be bad news. Mutu answers back on a bit of fit and he needs to get nice this heal. kill on Mutu, but the heal is too good. Oh my god, Bugsy deletes one with the help of Fischeko. There is the hit scan damage Bugsy. dealer, and Bugsy again makes the big play. Oh. Deletes creatives as he's trying to spite his best buddy Thiel on the front lines, and he finds another one to clean it up. <laughs> you can just see it on Bugsy. He just had the biggest. <sighs> yeah. Oh my god. Why, how couldn't you? Finally, my goodness gracious. And you gotta, you gotta say, you gotta keep encouraging these guys. Tenor gets his first couple of kills. Vichy's been hanging in there. He's he was, hanging he was in. three and five. Now he's six and eight. He's just barely hanging in there. Not a great performance, but Tenor's really the one that's got to get going. And let's talk about Umbi here. I mean, uh, Umbi's been pretty sick today. Nine and three. He's had some great moments. Some triple kills on Anara. He's been making this Tinker and Barrack look like the Tinker and Barrack of old when it had 650 damage instead of this 550. Uh, it, it's just been really hard, and I think that Fnatic's win is going to come off of just refocusing onto the front line the way that uh, Navi have been doing to Fnatic. Taking down on B is he's not been under a tremendous amount of pressure. There's right. a lot of poke coming out of Drogos, a lot of free damage hitting there, and it's always like it's happening for Navi. It's happening. It's always happening for them until pressure is put on them. Fnatic are very flank mindsetted players and, and I think that's what's playing into that a little bit for them. I think uh, you know this is where you have to look at Pacheco. And now they're on the push. They don't have to worry about that for a little bit. It will be 3-1 if they can't push this in. So this means a lot to them. Pacheco again in a very aggressive spot without a lot of plans. You look at that and you say, what's the strategy, Bob? We're robbing the bank. Um, well, let's just walk in there. Uh, Bob, I'm not feeling too confident about the strategy for robbing this bank. Yeah. And that's what that's what Fischeko's reminding me of with this play. He's just walking in there and saying, hopefully this works out. I think mentally adjusting is something that's not happening for Fnatic's backline at the moment. Navi do not play a lot of three DPS. They've played it, I believe, Shift said twice so far this event against Fnatic. Right. And it, it's just, ha it has to change. You have to recognize there is a third lethal player hunting for you in the backline. That's the difference there, right? Fischeko makes that rotation, and that probably works out. He gets that 1v1 with Mutu's Drogos. He probably wins it, but the difference there is he gets pinched by Phoenix's exactly. Sha Lin. There's no Phoenix on this Fernando down on the low ground. It's just a different style from Navi today. And, you know, have to play under more pressure. You can't keep trading out, and that is going to tilt. When you're damaged DPS flex and you keep dying all the time, you're not getting your doubles, your triples, and, and storm, you know, storming through the rest of the teams, that's going to start to, like, get in your head a little bit. And if Fischeko, again, it just feels on it. On his own page, admittedly, they already lost a few, so that didn't really matter too much. Push is not going to go through. This is going to be a successful defense for Navi. <laughs> and Mutu and Creatives, they're having pretty damn good days, I got to say here. Bugsy, Thiel and Gera keeping it alive for Fnatic, but they are going to need all oh, five Gera. performing well onto this objective if Fnatic are going to even stand a chance. So he saves Gera's life there. I thought it was Thiel that was being spited by Sam. You said that right. No, I, I said it was Gary. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, I said give his, yourself some credit. No, I said his best buddy Theo, but I I, I see what you're saying. I don't know. <laughs> I'll give myself credit even even anyways. Whose shoes are those? What moccasins have been? Those brought? are Theo's. Okay, Theo shoe list. That's right. Fischeko knee up. They've got to you know uh, put a put a sock in your nose. Do something. I don't know what it is, but you got to get the mojo back, <laughs> right, man. That's the play. That's absolutely the play. <laughs> I don't know. Creative's a little slow uh, out of the gate here. Four and eight. Phoenix. 12 and 7, excuse me, on the shot line. He's had great performances on his DPS. Thiel trying to do it again. Look at this. Straight to the back line, making some space, but this time he's evaporated. And that's a big, big play. Unbelievable uh, Thiel trade. It's just DPS and support on the battlefield right now, Nick. No tanks at all. Hell this is yeah, straight brother. damage. This is a bloodbath. Pacheco again leading the charge, getting Dread Serpent did as well. The overcommits that I've seen on this Bomb King from the perspective of someone who's easily killing him, uh, it's been too numerous. Yeah. But it does cost him that Dread Serpent there. I think Mutu misses a couple of key shots that force Spunky's hand a little bit where I don't think he would have rather if he could have helped it. A couple of ultimates still left. The Spite 
as well as the Heat Haze for Na'Vi to hold this defense. Big Headhunter and a big Immortal for Fnatic to work with. And I know why they're going back there, right? They need to get Spunky. That's what they're trying to do. But Barrack is not the healing sponge that Inara is. You can burst Barrack down with the damage you have here, even if Spunky is healing him. Now with Kot 2s, Kot 3s on the board, 69% for Na'Vi. Theo is getting pressured yet again. Mutu has kept his eye onto that front line, and here's another salvo. It's going to force his hand, but here's Fischeko, and he takes his eye off the prize, and now Fischeko's flank does work. Persistence is key, my friends, but again, Unbi turns around and bigs a huge frag, but a headshot from Bugsy turns it all around. It's just there every single time. Bugsy has been clutch. Every moment he's had an opportunity to hit a big shed headshot, he drives it home 70%. No one's on the objective for Fnatic. 75% for Navi. Theo's back. He's here. He's capping quickly. Navi have to make a move or at least touch. And there's a headhunter as well. He's going to pop the shield, and this does not get a lot of value. There's the rocket boots. He gets a nice crit there. Counter will be up for Zen, so he won't be in a bad spot. There's a big kill. Unbelievable goes down, and 87% and counting on the point. There he is. He shoved off the high ground, and one more on a Mutu. But Mutu's oh. not going to poke it. Pacheco gets to the back line. Pacheco's going to yeah. be able to just rip this apart. Mutu answers back, but Fnatic stay alive. Tenor spraying. He's feeling good. I think this is where the turnaround starts to happen for Fnatic, but they have to drive this game home. And the two who have been here since the beginning, alongside Theo, but not on the same team until just recently, Jera and Bugsy, they were the ones on streaks. Phoenix finally finding that return kill. Jarek could go big here with a through time in space. He's going to probably hold off knowing that his teammates are slowly and surely collapsing. Still not playing with a ton of healing support, of course, because the Genos is, is very damage amp oriented. But Bugsy, boy, has he had himself a game. He might be looking for another headshot here on Unbi Barrack, the walking head box. That always helps a little bit, missing a couple of easier shots that he's had. But sometimes that's how that goes. You know, you hit these insane headshots, you have no business hitting onto invisible Shaolins, and then yeah. you, you miss a Barrack waddling around the corner. Well, you know, it's just he's so short. Sometimes you just see the huge advantages in being smaller than some of the obstacles here on the map like Serpent Beach. Good flank by Phoenix, and oh, big time recorrection to find the kill onto his Bittner. He's going to go down for now on Fnatic, and they're going to stall this push out yet again with a minute and 20 left. Just pressing their advantage, and they're going to take down Thiel as well. Man, I mean, looking so good on the DPS. I think that's why you see the uh, the first pick Shaolin, because literally any of their DPS players, how Spunky could play this. Yeah. If he really needed Na'Vi to do it. And that's just such a flexible pick for them in this set. I like Cassie a lot more for Na'Vi than I do for Fnatic here. That's the big difference maker. Fishy's super comfy on the Bomb King, but Tenor on the Cassie needs to step up. He really does. You know, it's first pick, and you said the pip didn't look the same, but maybe that just means it's not about the champions not looking the same. Maybe he's Bittner having a, having a time to just really get rolling, right? He's he's a guy that hey, they've wanted to shine and has shown for them during the regular season, but Atlan is just... There's something that's been missing between these two young stars. Fnatic said it at the beginning. You know, the real difference is if these young guys come to play, then they feel like if everyone plays their game, they will win. And, you know, made in complete sarcasm, but Fishy said, you know, Bugsy's super flexible because he just gets the leftovers <laughs> of whatever me and Tenor don't want to play. Right. I don't know about that, young man. <laughs> I don't know about that today. I think Bugsy was like... I need, a, I need to have a game-changing opportunity here. I need to be able to just trust my That's why I love what they picked, man. I love the Knesset last pick here from Fnatic. I think this just doubles down on what they're damn good at. Yeah, and he's, he's missed he's missed the chance of where Drogos was going, but it doesn't mean that he won't get another one. Phoenix is stealth down there. The Oppressor Mine, and of course, the Sound of Planet will reveal him. Hello, Spunky. Cactus in my face. Never a good situation. Even if it's Spunky, but oh, does he respond? Tries to go for the invisible Phoenix. He knows it. Bugsy turns up the heat. Fnatic are trying to tie this thing up. And now moving into Mutu. You Hello. need to get this kill. You need to stay alive here. That's good. Full wipe for Na'Vi. They have all their ultimates available, but I don't know if they make it out here in time. You're going to have to dismount because he can headshot you off the mount before you use your abilities there. Bugsy has such a good line of sight, no. but Phoenix... You dog, what a play, and Fischeko in the back line. He might try to get Bugsy, excuse me, uh, Spunky, but it's going to be Mutu who cleans up the Bomb King. Overtime is here, and I think that's going to be it. Oh, Na'Vi with a huge no. play. With no ultimates? From Phoenix. That was big. They get that with no ultis? That blows for Fe oh, Fnatic. Big dropped opportunity there. It's not the end of the world, and they don't really want to commit ultimates. We talked about, you know, you don't want to... Put yourself in a weakened state, a position to lose the game handily here in that 3-3 yeah. scenario. So they don't go all in for the capture, but that would have been nice. All ultimates 
available. I'd love to see the KDAs one more time as well. We did take a quick look at those. And, you know, Fischeko now really contributing so much more. His aggressiveness has been clear, right? He's died deaths, 19 though, times. I mean, look at everyone else. I mean, it's 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 too aggressive. I'd rather see you hold back and go two to one. Go one and a half to one. Get, get a positive KDA there. But I think at this point, he's just committed to diving this back line. And, and Fnatic are starting to work around it. They know he's going to die, but that pressure is somehow like they're, they're adjusting around it. Big difference here in the round approach for Fnatic this time. They've sent Theo to Navi's high ground every single time so far. But, you know, they do have the half comeback mechanic. They've had the comeback mechanic in the past. So whether or not that's uh -oh. the right play. Spite for mobility. Whirl completely whiffed. Creatives did not get where he wanted to. And he is dead to right. And that's what I want to see Fischeko do. I don't know about the Immortal. I love Bugsy's positioning. They're pincered. But I know that it's great to keep their fish alive. And Mutu will end Fish's life. They trade yet again. That has just been the story, hasn't it? Nice impale there. The old looking for <laughs> Phoenix. But he can't find him at all. Throws the shield up. And Phoenix and Spunky are going to turn that one around. Just one punch. Punch, two punch, bad cop, oh good my. cop, and now the planet it won't connect. That's big. I think Fnatic. Oh my! May have and may just did lose this game where they lost Bittner there. He's unable to get any value there. Phoenix has been great on this DPS. I mean, Theo might have wanted to do the Bugsy strat, right? Right, the the bitey strat where he just uses that ruckus and he doesn't know where you went, but he just combs from the left all the way to the right. Might hit him there through time and space off the mark, not onto the point. And again, Phoenix contributing to the damage here onto Theo. This is looking dire and desperate for Fnatic and looking fantastic if you are a Navi and Phoenix supporter. He drops, but then he rotates Boom. out to a great position here. Navi doing great things in this fight. 93% on the objective. Objective. Just a couple more ticks, but they're all starting to fall really low. That's it. Can Bugsy make a miracle play happen? Mutu puts the nail in the coffin and that says no more. That is it, Nick. It's 3-1. to one. Na'Vi, they are one game away from winning this Masters land in Atlanta. What a performance that has come out here and probably been more shocking to most of this community considering how close these teams are. How do you pick an MVP from that Na'Vi lineup? And at this oh, point... no. I think I think Fnatic started to tighten up. They started to get a little bit of traction there towards the end of the game. Obviously, better start or a better finish for Tenor and Fishy than a start. But still, is it too little, too late? They have they have to battle back. They have to essentially reverse sweep at this stage. What do you say? I mean, just the faces, man. They're all just adjusting their seating positions and. I don't know if that's enough. That ain't helping. I don't know if that's enough. Maybe Absolutely try the sock not. in the nose. You might want to just do, do something. I don't know. We might have some food. Maybe a bathroom break will change things up. You know how big pauses, big moments, they now have to reset. They are one game away from getting out of it. And Na'Vi, one game away from finding their first land win in the last five months. What exactly is a sock in the nose? It's to get the smell. Oh. It's to bring the aroma back from a few days ago. You remember? <laughs> So is that a put them in a, put them, put them in a comfortable? I mean, I don't know. They were comfortable then. They're not that comfortable now. That's yeah, true. True. The change is that those rooms have been aired out. Well, hopefully, <laughs> in some instances earlier this week. Let's hit the for end of first round stats. Cassie, zero and five. Fernando, zero and five. Canessa, six and two. Yeah. Reactions to the first round. Bugsy is ridiculous. <laughs> That actually early on, I feel like he wasn't as aggressive as he could have been. Later on, it, if like he had just been doing that all game, it might have been the difference maker. Yeah, he played a little bit too passively on the first round. Sure, he was in the enemy backline, but he wasn't. He was being very cautious with the angles which Kness was looking to find. It took a little bit too long to get everything online. A couple of kills came through, but too little, too late. And you end up with Navi just having the better core fight. Yeah, and so for me, I mean. <sighs> Bugsy is is silly, is insane, but it's not just that was what the, like really rode Fnatic forward. It was a lot of the fact that there wanted to be that aggression from Fnatic. It just never ended up becoming a thing. I mean, Thiel died before the third round fully got through. He was two and nineteen. He was four yeah. deaths uh, at least above everybody else. Seven deaths above anybody from Navi. I mean, when a solo Barrack is fighting into a solo Fnatic that continues to die. You get to go in, move in, put all your turrets down, set up, be comfortable there. Yeah. And there were times he wasn't comfortable. Again, walking head, there's a sniper on the other side. Most of the time that trade went the way of Bugsy. But once he was established, that shield could come up. And unless Bugsy was able to do something about it, I mean, Fischeko every now and then could do something. But for a lot of it, Na'Vi were just playing protect the president. There was a pretty 
poor target focus as well from some members of Fnatic. When the barricade would go up, it's who's got Wrecker, who's going to focus the shield down? Why are they shooting somebody else? Why aren't they shooting the shield down so Bugsy can do the Bugsy thing? And little mm. miscommunications like that, I'm not sure whether there was an underestimation from Fnatic to say, well, we can just shoot around or we can pr find the angles anyway, or thinking they didn't necessarily need to. The unbelievable, I mean, is living up to his namesake for sure. Thiel finishes that game with a .4. KDA. Meanwhile, you can see the 3.8 coming out for Unbelievable. I mean, it wasn't necessarily just a battle of the front lines that we were watching. There was a lot of other things that were going on with two triple DPS teams going at each other. But when the battle in the trench is that so lopsided, there's really, in my opinion, no way Fnatic can come back. Yeah, it's one of those things. Had they not had such a good performance there, then coming into this map, it would have just been another rallying cry. Because they did so well, specifically because Bugsy had so much pressure, because everything that seemed to be like, oh man, we can actually win this, we could actually win this, and then that defense comes through, and everything seems to get blocked from that point on. Now you're going into this last game like, that was the best we've played, and it didn't even make a difference. Yeah, and Ascension Peak as well, Vox, this was an area that we did see them banning away uh, the Knessa before. If you're Navi, do you have to ban the Knessa again here to keep it away from Bugsy? I don't necessarily feel like you have to at this point. I think the Navi can counter draft around it quite successfully, and really, it's up to them to be able to do so. I think the Zin pickup for Navi was a nice surprise. They've both shown something in their back pocket right now, and could continue to do so here. Solo frontline, though, I'm less less certain about that. Well, this map is an interesting one. We talk about it a lot when it comes up, which is rarely still, even after a couple of weeks of it being competitively in the game. But it's the simple fact that solo frontliners here, they have more room to work with because of all the different line of sight breaks, specifically on the point. Also, Navi, just to point this out, Inara bound, no turbinus spam. That's an interesting one. Huh. They're going to give Fnatic the first pick Inara here. Well, the thing I was actually kind of curious about was this is a map where snipers have done a lot of work in the yes. past. Specifically, like, my mind goes back to Ricotta on Kinesa, but being able to see what Bugsy just did on Kinesa, right. that should translate here. I wouldn't be surprised if Fnatic want to go for that later on. It's a weird conversation, though, right? Because you have so much value in the solo Inara, but then you're probably going to give up that Kinesa, or, yeah. I mean, I don't anticipate the Strix because the mobility is just not there, but can you really... I mean, Bugsy's got to be feeling himself at this point. Do you almost say we'll give up the Inara just because Oof. of that point pressure can be extended by those line of sight breaks where a Barrett could do well, Fox? Well, also, you got to remember that Mave is on the table as well, and if Fnatic Man. take the Inara here, potentially you're looking at a Mave and a Cassie being on the side of Na'Vi, and that's not a combination that you ever really want to face against, so Na'Vi should get Inara Cassie here. I'd be surprised to see another pick coming through, but they might prioritize the support early on. Or even the Sniper, but no, it is the Cassie. Okay. Okay. This makes sense, I think. But again, now you're in a conversation wheel of you have the flank pressure for Fnatic on one of the more powerful characters in the game. You might be able to also mimic that up with a very long yeah. distance damage dealer if they do go with the Kinesa. I, I personally, I think if Bugsy's going to continue to play like he just did, give the man the, give the, man the Kinesa <laughs> Well, again. here's the issue that we have with that. Bugsy's one of the only Mave players on Fnatic right now, but also if you don't go ahead and take either Drogos or Bomb King here, I mean, you give Na'Vi Drogos, which Mutu has demonstrated to be absolutely devastating, but also you can end up facing Cassie Bomb King, which shuts down Mave incredibly well. Now, last time we saw Ascension Peak between these teams, it was a 4-0 in favor of Fnatic, and you had mentioned that Bugsy's been playing a lot of the Mave, but it was actually Tenor who played the Mave back then. So there's potential there. We saw he, he was... Flexibility. Yeah, he really wasn't hitting home with the Cassie. Uh, this could potentially be a momentum changer for him. And this is a map that makes it, I think, a little bit easier to be a flank just because sure. there's so many paths. So if you do want to flex onto someone who's maybe not as comfortable as Bugsy would be, this is the map to do it. If you're going into Serpent Beach, you need that Mave to be on someone who's comfortable. Coming into Ascension Peak, I think it allows you a little bit more leeway. I think, though, out of all of this, Na'Vi, there's one thing that's truly deadly to them on this map, and it's the well. True. <laughs> well, <laughs> absolutely true. But so far, I mean, uh, spunky. man, if you're uh, looking at Fnatic and what just happened with Thiel solo Fernando, I don't know if you feel comfortable. Unless Thiel's out there saying, you know what, I had a bad game. I'm not going to play like that again. Well, I think the Fnatic were actually looking for potentially a Zin Buck draft here, as that kind of Zin slash Buck semi frontline would have been very useful for them here. But instead, with Zin being taken by Navi, they'll be forced into, I say forced, they'll take the Bomb King here. And they'll also take Whoa. the Khan away from Navi. This is the more unexpected pick, but it's that spot healing that might be very good at synergizing with the Mave as we have seen before. Now, for Yukor, is this Navi saying, here's a taste of your own medicine, we'll go solo on Nara and then hit you with the 3 DPS? 
I mean, it'll be really interesting because yesterday the only game that they actually won against Fnatic was with a solo front line. So this is the point where they might be able to kind of flex around onto that. But at the same time, it kind of feels like specifically with the Mave, with the Bomb King and Khan being able to enable them a little bit more, it'll be more dangerous to run just sure. Inara overall. Hmm. Well, it's interesting because, of course, that impasse wall can create a lot of space simply yeah. due to the environment that's built up around the central point. The and okay. It's going to be Leon? I was almost expecting wow. the Drogos to come through here, yeah, in all same. honesty. I, but then you are playing into a Maeve. The Leon and the Cassie combo can be very devastating versus Maeve. And also, that early anti heal shutdown might help them outplay the card a little bit if they're trying to use that as a spot heal for one of the flankers. All right, well, there is just the one map given, quite literally given, to Fnatic. They haven't won a game yet here today. Well, there's only one thing that can happen. Let's go over to the prettiest of hairs and the rainiest of days to potentially close out the day. Rain hair, pretty day. Either way you want to slice it, we are excited to be casting this one. Evan Rainer, Nick Keo, and we're finally in a game that can decide this tournament forever for Na'Vi. Fnatic have to reverse sweep now, and though they've been given a game in hand, Alan's right, they have not won a game yet today. But I keep feeling good. Every time I go in a game, I like that draft, I, you know, running the solo <laughs> Fernando front line. It's it, good to you. I'm never like, you know, I wasn't disappointed. I don't think Bugsy Zinn was the reason they lost. I don't think Deals Fernando was the reason they lost that game. Solo frontline is, 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 except for really when you're on a Nara, your your fate isn't really in your own hands. Oh. You have to go do your thing and hope your teammates kill everyone. You that's, don't have to tell me, bro. That's, that's really uh, really the, the size of it here. And I think still a very comfortable draft. They're still smiling in their booth. I don't think they're out of this one quite yet. And I think Bugsy taking the onus to play Khan. You know, this is not leftovers. This is a shift in direction. And maybe this is just a shift in responsibility for Bugsy, who says, I'm going to take this mantle right here. I'm going to take the weight of this team and put it on my shoulders to succeed. And Khan can definitely do that. Very, very powerful ultimate on this map. 12% now for Nottis Vincier. Already stepping on the point and a little bit of a dosi -si do here around the objective. It's such a brand new map, so it'll be interesting to see both of the ways that these teams approach playing it. Tenor's first trip to the back line proving unsuccessful. No fruits bearing just yet. Navi still on the objective, still capturing away. And yeah. every second, is frankly a loss for Fnatic. Well, well, I don't know why Khan's not playing a little bit more aggressively. I like that they're sending the back line. You know, I think it's Bittner on this Mave, just having the opportunity to poke away. He almost gets creative, but why, why, why Bugsy's not just, you know, just poke here. You got your battle shot, you got your shield. You should be okay. No one can burst it the same way, and there it is. They know this is lifeline here, and they've got to take this one for all they've got. Fisheko and Bugsy find a couple. And a really big battle shot there on a tenor, just barely keeping them both alive. They need some healing, though. There's not a whole lot of it. I like the, the duality of the throughput of Genos, the burst from the Khan. There will be uh, some pretty clutch moments here for Bugsy, and if he can even... If they bring this set back, Bugsy's absolutely the MVP. The flexibility, oh, the Kinesa that just kept them in the set up until this point. And really, a lot of uh, adjustments here. That card, Hulking Strength, is getting buffed next patch, so it will be even better if you want to copy this build. Never Surrender, Plate Mail, big, big cards. And actually, Close and Personal is something that's just going to give him some more damage reduction, a little bit more than Haven 1, almost about the Haven 2 level of 14% after he uses that Commander's Grab, which again is also getting buffed. So Khan only going to get better. Right now, Bugsy just investing into health, trying to stay alive as best as he can. He knows it's so important for his teammates. He's got his shield down, and they have to wait until that gets to 50% for it to recharge again. So he's going to go offensive. He's going to try and make something happen here, and his Spinner up into the air. It's 90% for Fnatic. They've got to find a kill, and Phoenix is still alive. Enlightenment comes through, but he misses. It's Bittner finds the kill under the Anara. Tenor had to push. Fusheko had to find that kill. Everything that Fnatic have to do is happening right now for them. It's a complete sweep over, Huge. over Na'Vi. The overtime will expire, and Fnatic, the orange and black, finally getting the first point on the board. And that was a hard-fought battle, Nick. Three minutes to capture that objective. It is one of the longer ones we've seen. And finally, Fischeko on a six streak, playing more patiently. And maybe that's the conversation. Maybe Bugsy being that vanguard for this team, literally in the Primus of House Ico Khan, but also for his team is saying, guys, relax. Let's play more patient. We were just giving them too many kills last game. That could potentially, yeah. And, and having that, I guess, a mentality to be able to adjust, to keep his guys in the game. It's good, f you know, Bittner's on something else. He needs to get going early on this wave. Good fight from him out of the gate. 
but also at the same time recognizing that Con Mave is such an aggressive duo and not it being is. too scared when it is time to hit the gas pedal to do so. Ooh, this is an interesting flank. I mean, he uses a lot of cooldowns to get to this right side, but he does it quickly. He shifts the fight. He shifts the tide, and it opens up this left side as well if they want to push in on it. Con is there, so he's got healing, and he's got CC immunity, so there's not much that they're going to be able to shut down, especially with the Inara. Big blast there from Prosecco. Finds creatives, and a minute and 30 seconds left. They don't have the Midnight activated yet, uh, but they could if Vismitner wants to capitalize off of finding Mutu. Ooh, this is big. Fnatic have some ultimates to burn as well to maybe keep this going, keep this alive. Wow. And that's just a commander's grab. A very staggered kill onto Spunky here. He's going to be he dead for the next spray. 12 seconds. Fnatic have every ultimate available. Na'Vi. Umbi's only at 53% on Seismic Crash. And 9 Streak, I mean, this is what's happening that didn't happen at all in the first yeah, five, couple of They're 10 of and games. 1 between the two of them that, this time. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they have not gone off. Like, imagine, you know, Fnatic almost kept it close with just Bugsy really going off. Imagine if Bittner and Fischeko start get going. Oh boy, 11 Streak for them. This is looking like a very aggressive start. That's been really only aggressive based off of how passive and patient they've been. Yeah, it's been really awesome to watch. It's Ascension Peak. It's Fnatic switching up their draft. They have shifted gears extremely hard in this game, and Na'Vi have to be able to be the ones to respond now. And this is that double-edged sword, right? This is the momentum changing and back in favor of Fnatic. This is Na'Vi being so close, coming in down a game already because of the winner's bracket advantage, going up three games straight. They have so much room to give, but every game that they do give, every point that they do give is a little... Just birdie in the back of your mind saying, uh-oh, uh -oh. what's happening here? Are we going to drop this again? I mean, at this point, Fnatic are, and Na'Vi are both playing mind games with their history, right? Na'Vi have never beaten Fnatic. Fnatic have always not won these finals when they've gotten there, basically. The ones they really feel like they need to win. Springland, okay, Masters Land, this is what they want. They need the 2-0. They don't want to split 1-1. Second place is last place, like they said. Fischeko has a king bomb. Do you think he goes for it early here? I think this is such a very wide open map. It's almost like Frozen Guardi where it's going to be tough for, for Fishy to get to the back line to find a lot of value. If anything, it's going to be mostly a zoning ult, I think. Watch Mutu here. He's going to try to reposition to find a little bit of poke on a Fischeko. They know that's a problem. And he, Bugsy just brings him in. He doesn't throw him off the map. Just everyone focus him down. Bugsy with the Dread Serpent, but it's a day late and a dollar short. They don't quite find anything. And now it's Bittner actually pops the Midnight and it, it makes Mutu back all the way up towards his base. Forces out the scout. Everyone's so low, but no one in not from Na'Vi is really in a position to finish one of these kills. This is a big in hand oh. there. Isn't able to quite get Bittner. He's so tanky under 40% health. Oh, and through time and space does not connect. I think he goes for Mutu. There is finally the seismic crash, but Bittner falls just below creative. And I think that is going to save his life there. But <gasps> he goes with the power shout, and that means he's CC immune, so the spike does get wasted. 40% still left, and now Navi can zone a little bit. That's so scary because despite all that, despite creatives being stuck in counter during that stun on Tenor, despite his ultimate bouncing off of Bugsy, Fnatic still weren't able to win that fight. And think about it, Maeve hasn't died. She just hung around, so this means they are definitely going to be able to contest. That's a problem. They've got Jero on the sixth streak. They haven't been able to get to the back line. Maeve has been absolutely Absolutely phenomenal. Phoenix needs to contribute to this. He doesn't have the enlightenment. This should be a dead Phoenix. Wonderful what? wall there by Unbelievable. That angle. I, I mean, I can't believe he played it that way. That's not how that wall is usually used, Nine. but he makes it work. 90%. Bugsy's dead. Tenor's dead. Everyone dying for Fnatic. Thiel's gone. Running for his life. Gera. He's not found what he wants. He's not happy. Na'Vi, comeback mechanic in hand, makes that a fairly easy capture for them, a fairly quick one, and they get their first points on the board. And it's a great play from Unbelievable, who has had a myriad of great plays. And that is just showing that this man has value no matter where he is, no matter uh, any position you put him on, especially in that front line, he is just contributing crucial, crucial moments. And now it's a fanatic. Uh, Swarm there as they finish off creatives. They're going to stall this defense now. And actually, Spunky's going to maybe try to hit the gas pedal, save a few of his teammates. Yeah, it's a good call to push him there. They knew he didn't have any cooldowns to play around with, but Navi almost able to respond there. And it's such a risk to, to you know, ult a clumped up Fnatic with Khan there. Bugsy's going to be able to be yeah. super reactionary with his battle shout. That These Dread Serpents, these seismic crashes have a potential to just fall flat on their face. And that's, uh, that is definitely a good point to mention. Bugsy doesn't get that one, but he gets the Zen Spite. You know, these are moments that they go a different way, change the map. And it's four seconds of CC Mini. That is stupid long. Oh, yeah. It's a big deal. I mean, you're almost better off just popping it before anything happens, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, preemptively. You're just, hey. Here's a you know half a half a point fight. If anything, right, e e the moment will fade. The opportunity window will have closed after four seconds. I know it's just really really strong. And this Bittner 
playing off of that with the Maeve. We've seen these dynamic duos of, of Khan, Maeve, Makoa, Maeve. Really just aggressive tank and Maeve opening up so much space for another team, another damage dealer to do what they need to do uh, to help carry a battle. Phoenix, good job on the Leon as well, Na'Vi. I'm a little bit surprised. They talked a little bit about it on the desk, but mm -hmm. potential for Phoenix to play Cassie as well. That's, I think, one of his bays as well. Mm -hmm. But they do kind of come out with the Leon, which uh, it's a pick that is hard to dive. I think that's really what it comes down to. It does decently against the Maeve. There's not a lot that has been hard and fast that you just pick this up against the Maeve and you'll be fine. Another spite. That one feels like uh -oh. a little bit more for mobility. Fishy's in a bad spot here. Bugsy is as well. Oh, no. And they both oh, go tumbling no. one by one. His Bittner needs to save uh, everyone here. That Gord has a little funky bounce. Spunky knocks it on the archway and it falls down unbelievable and the rest of Navi are pushing here and I, I think with this door shut they're going to open up the high ground this is a great place to zone Oof. but they're not fast enough it's going to be a 2-2 two -two. oh Certain, boy certainly is and I think when you have the double front line you want to be able to bring that one back Phoenix plays an interesting angle and you know the decision to use the spite for mobility just to get to the high ground to push these boys down. Bugsy has a tough call as well. It's like, do I continue to peel for this guy or do yeah. I? am I just dying if I go any further in? And maybe it's like we both jump off right there. You know, I don't know what the what the call is, what the play is. Jera still hasn't died in that round um, since obviously losing the point. Coward. Coward. Your whole team is fallen. And you are still alive? I don't know what voice that is. That's not even from a movie. It's from my own movie. You original, want to act in it? Original content. <laughs> original content. Explodes oh to the forefront here. There it is. And this Bittner now has the Midnight. It's going to be used proactively this time. Didn't really get a lot of value last point fight from it. Uh, there are double kills happening all over. At least it's what it sounds like. But uh, no one's died yet <laughs> on the side of uh, not a sincere or Fnatic. And now trying to spoil it. Here comes the <laughs> King Bomb through the Immortal. A lot of ultimates committed for Fnatic. Yikes. But they don't get Jack. NA ult. EU ult. I think King Bummel is really what that should be said. In NAEU, both players, both regions have difficulties hitting that thing, and you can, you know why. You're very exposed. It's hard to get to it. Everyone backs up, and it, it creates space. Now Fischeko playing off the space that he has preemptively created, and there's a through time in space, but it's not going to find the Inara. 54% for Fnatic. They're capturing up, up, and away. Both of these backliners, Fishy and Overpower. Tenor, are over here. They're overpowered, raising Phoenix up as the sacrificial lamb. It's the first kill for Fnatic. Fishy with a nice reposition as well. He gets the heal from Bugsy to stay alive. And speaking of sacrifice, Official lamb. Fnatic, they might be in the move for some more shawarma. Not sure if they're going to be able to make it happen, but there's the next treat. Oh, it's yeah, unbelievable. Fischeko finds that one. Theo with the brand. So much anti-heal. And now Creatives is back here trying to stall. But even Bugsy's contributing big time damage. Big boy plays. Fnatic are about to go 3-2 up. But hold that thought. Here's Mutu. Maybe a second chance. Just rolls in. I don't know if he's going to be able to make it back out over time. Still burning here. Unbelievable. Is going to be able to immune the grab from Bugsy. He gets to the objective. He's got a little bit of healing coming through. Tenor loses uh -oh. his life trying to dive blindly, but Navi I don't know if they got the steam to bring this one back. Fnatic go ahead and do it and definitely got to give a lot of credit to Theo there. It wasn't. It was just barely caught through silhouettes on the broadcast but he was kind of zoning out three people and he escaped with minimal HP which is basically the dream scenario for a front line. That is maximum space bot. 16th streak as well for Jera who is still only having one death in this game. And uh, again, not very normal, but for EU standards of these top supports, you could probably call it normal, or at least not an unusual day in the park for them to have these incredible KDAs. Creatives finding field now trying to find the second front line on the side of Fnatic. 100,000 damage in the lead. That's Fischeko on the BK, a total transition from the prior game where he just looked like he was missing in action. Now a big component of why Fnatic are winning here. Gara doing a good job keeping up on the healing charts despite the Damba and Nara combo for Nadas Vincere, and of course, nice little drop in the bucket there from Bugsy's Khan as well. Clutch heals all around the board, top of the net worth charts as well, which is, is frankly pretty impressive. I guess because we've never had a, a front line who can be sitting on the objective doing damage from range at the same time healing his teammates. Yeah, it's a very unique kind of proposition for sure. And Maeve having a hard time dealing with this poke from Zen. He doesn't have a Luminary, but it, that 850 chunks just as much. Uh, as the 977, and now again, you see, it's just so difficult for his Bittner win that poke battle in these small spaces. He needs to poke from range, open up a target, and Phoenix, he's got a clever flank going on on the right side here. He sure does. He's working his way slowly around Leon. Can be effective from this range, 
but it's just so hard to make the connection initially. Finds just four in a row onto Theo, slides through. It's a little bit of a dosy -si do here, but no one from Fnatic is getting kills. And the thing is, Phoenix is drawing attention. Mutu creatives are playing off of that. Phoenix stays alive because then the conversation switches towards them. It's just a really good cohesion moment for not as been and it proves why they've been so successful I mean even if Fnatic win this game and that's not looking like any guarantee you could tell if Navi are not giving this setup easily almost every ultimate charged up for Fnatic here but only 20 seconds on the clock and a hell of a long way to go on a map like Ascension Peak that a it's new but B it's statistically one of the hardest maps to convert on I don't know if this is the scenario that they dive deep for it the positioning of Theo and Bugsy right now doesn't give me a ton of confidence. They're moving up through this high temple. It's Tenor grouped up with Bugsy. Fishy's moving in, but Mutu's getting the better end of these trades so far. He misses the blast shot, though, but there's a huge presence from Phoenix. I mean, how can you just talk about this Leon play without having a smile on your face, without saying, wow, this is a, this is a big level contribution. This guy flexing onto the front lines, front flexing onto the damage. He's got the Tyra spray as well. He's just representing all kinds of players here. Navi just look like they're playing a little bit smarter right now. The way they're moving around Smoother. the map. Move to, you know, like like he, com he comes through, realizes this isn't a winning fight for me, and then in a split second, the target swap is called again. I think Mutu's played phenomenally today. He's been pretty much the flex, and it's a little bit weird because that was creatives at HRX, hands down, but Mutu, oh, yeah. I feel, has been the more cr the more flexible player for Na'Vi in this tournament, playing a little bit of Zin, a little bit of Drogos, and a whole lot of everything else we're used to seeing from him. Umbi's been phenomenal for me, you know, as well. He's just been really tasked to do one thing and do it well, and he has, and that's been so key. You know, Navi have been the ones who are, are less consistent in their performances based on their play with Fnatic. But let's remember, you know, they took them to seven games on Wednesday. They did lose 4-1 or 3-1, excuse me, earlier uh, yesterday, but it doesn't mean that they cannot take these guys down. They're scrim partners. They know how they play, but unbelievable getting poked a little bit too much. Yeah, I think he's already used the wall as well. So the second pounce, no, there's the wall, but I think this should finish him off. 15, wow. 15, and the stone Warden falls. It's just that simple. Now making the big rotation up. Fnatic still have juice in the tank. They still have King Bomb and Immortal. Navi. Uh oh. They had an enlightenment, but now Phoenix gets taken down. Tom Brady and now completely cross-eyed creatives have no idea what angles Fisheka was coming at him from. And this is a King Bomb that I like. It zones. He's buying time. He's buying space. He's going down there. The counter. It is going to be difficult. And this means that Fisheka is really drawing the line here. Can he stay alive? He's going to get the Luminary heal. He's got to fight Mutu. Mutu rolls in. Vesheko gets the big trade. He has shown up explosively in this set, and Fnatic now are looking poised to take this game. Still winning on the objective fight. The overtime started in front uh, or four in favor of Fnatic, and I think it's going to expire that way as well. Phoenix forced to Good slide heal. in, and Tenor still stalling out creatives. There's one more reset coming through. The counter, Ooh. the billow, it's all here. Unbi's going to be getting back shortly. Navi! Yeah, this is not over. Hung on. It's not over. It's a full reset for the Zen as well, and creatives does a great job there in Spunky. How can you talk about his healing without saying this is just a maestro at his craft? Creatives taking a risk, going to the backside. Overtime is running away, and I think Fnatic are smart to just pull off here. They find his Bittner taking unbelievable down. He's got to get creatives, but Abilo is going to give him a second chance, and Spunky's going to be right there with the heal. Hits him with a big execution there. Look at the overtime resetting. It's going to expire God. so ding, ding, fast. Ding, 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 there ding. it is. Goes <laughs> in favor of Fnatic. They finally put their foot down, take a game, and stay alive. Remember, now they were given a game, so they technically have two wins now in this set. It's three <sighs> games that they basically go down, uh, and, and now Fnatic have to win two more in a row. They've got to win three in a row. They have to do exactly what Na'Vi did to them. And uh, this is this is not just the next to win a game if you're Navi, the next to win two games if you are Fnatic. What a wild turn of events there. And Navi, you gotta say, so close to actually cleaning this one up, it just didn't end up working despite you know them playing excellently. Yeah, I think it's just a bigger adjustment made by Fnatic and finally Tenor and Fishy coming alive. That's simply too much to slow down. And now. It's on Navi. They have to say, okay, they're starting to make moves. What are we going to do before we let this one slip away? And I mean, also, the double front line. Bugsy provided a lot of appeal, a lot of room, a lot of resets for this fight to continue. So maybe that's the answer Fnatic have been missing today. It certainly seems like they've woken up. Your good old-fashioned turnaround for the side of Bittner and Fish specifically. Pretty hard hit it. They went at a combined 10 and 1 at one point before that 2-0 slid in. Talk about what that has to mean for Fnatic. I mean, honestly, it just feels like the full turnaround, like you said. Na'Vi, that game, the way they drafted it, especially towards the end, 
It kind of felt like things got out of hand. I don't necessarily stand behind when the Leon came through and you give Fasheko the Bomb King, you get that Mave that looks so phenomenal, and then you just boost them and let them play the way they wanted to. And you had remarked that you were looking for potentially the Drogos to come out at the end of that draft. Did the Leon kind of feel lackluster for you as well? It really did. It. You know, the Drogos has been a big success story for Navi so far. Sure, they played a great Leon on a frozen guard map, but on Ascension Peak, where there are a lot more confined spaces, especially around the objective, where you might want that area damage, uh, the, the Drogos just seems to be a more appealing pick. Sure, you're playing into a Mave, a Bomb King, a Khan, but realistically, it just has so much more in terms of raw damage potential than anything else they could have chosen. It just kind of felt like Na'Vi didn't know Ascension Peak well enough to be able to come into Ascension Peak and well, play. Then I think that was NIP. a good turnaround. No falling down the well <laughs> this time. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and again, it was a 4-0 in favor of Fnatic. <laughs> Obviously, things were closer this time around. You know, the other storyline, again, we talked about that front line, solo front line matchup on the point specifically. Thiel looked a lot better yeah. here than he definitely did in our previous. And I feel like that was, again, just something that Hey, I had a bad game. Let's get back onto it. It's a really much bigger point, I think, than most of the other maps. And with the way it's laid out, it's a lot easier, I think, for Fernando specifically to be able to kind of stay alive and compete with Inara in that solo frontline area where it's, yeah, normally Inara is hard to kill, but you can kind of lock her down. Unbelievable. There was always the same door he was coming through, the same pathing to get back onto the point, and they just kept him in that corner until he died. And a lot of that pressure was given by the incredible display of the Bomb King we just saw from Fish Echo just previously. My goodness. Talk about someone who needed to find a way to come back into the series after the last game where uh, the, I think Nick and Bevan hit it perfectly. There were so many times where he was going way aggressively in front of where Thiel was. This time through, a lot more of a map to play with where he can kind of find these converted corners where no one can really, really pick him out. And he's able to do a lot of damage in the meantime, of course, hitting a number of great sticks to make sure those kills were converted. Of course, you always want your Bomb King to find good burst damage, but when he brings big kill potential, that's huge as far as turning the game around for Fnatic. It really is, and again, when we, I've mentioned this several games in a row, it's the positive pressure that allows your frontline to not just be turned and burned as soon as they walk onto the objective. Yeah. It's the fact that you have all of this damage coming through that's back to the old style of Fnatic, of forcing people to look in different directions, and it was very overwhelming, and Fnatic had a lot of boons on their side to really enable that. We just saw Fish hitting for over a thousand with the Sticky Bomb, for example. The Luminary buff certainly comes into play there, as well as the fact that you always have to be present and aware of where the Mave is on the map as well, meaning that Fish Echo was less easily focused down, even if out of position. How about the change of tempo for Bugsy, though? Going from Kinesa to playing Khan, he's still <laughs> hitting headshots, to be completely fair, yeah. but I think that really says the true testament of why Bugsy is as good as he is yeah. when you can go from that polar opposite play. A really huge flex being able to jump from that. And like it's completely different, not just in shooting. Like, okay, yeah, you're still hit scan. You can still do the headshots. But your play style is completely different from what you were doing before. You are now getting maybe a little bit more aggressive than you would have as the Knesset. You're kind of hanging around in different angles, looking for different positioning. So being able to not only switch over, but play the con well, something that I don't know if we've actually seen Fnatic run as successfully as we've seen against Na'Vi. So being able to pick that up was actually a huge testament for their success. And on the other side of things, unbelievable still, holding down a very solid solo Inara, still finding a way to convert kills, which is something he's always been able to do as a storied frontline player. But the big thing, again, is it's going up into the face of a Maeve who, for again, has, I believe, won every single game in this head-to-head -head matchup. So far, I mean, it's been banned out uh, two out of three, three games in a row. So yeah, this is the only game that Maeve has actually been played so far in this specific matchup today. In previous uh, days, a little bit different, but honestly, Shift, yeah, it's a really difficult circumstance to put yourself into. And Navi seemed to almost be, as Gore mentioned before, baiting out Fnatic going, you know, take the NR. You value it so much, take the NR. And Fnatic have found a way around that. They found a way to play differently, which is good. And it's a definitely a good improvement, but again, they got a very uphill battle ahead of them, and I'm not sure if just a solo Mave, depending on what map we go to specifically, will be enough to really enable Fnatic to keep on pulling out victories. Well, how about Frozen Guard as our sixth map in total? Again, Fnatic granted that first map win because they came through the winner's bracket, having defeated Na'Vi yesterday in the winner's finals. But again, this might just be the swing that Fnatic needs. Is this the, the proverbial sock to the nose? I don't know if I could put it there, but I would say that because of the way they drafted, the way things have been going for them, they're definitely picking up a lot more. Maybe they've gotten, you know, some aroma swirling back in the room. We'd have to go and look at the admin to really see <laughs> how things are going for that. But they definitely are looking like they feel more like themselves now. Sure. Well, picks and bans coming our way again. Makoa Ruckus has been the big storyline as far as the continual bans that we see. But this map very different again last time. 
I believe we saw them. It was Kanessa and Strix banned out first, which allowed the Maeve to go through, which she very regularly does here on Frozen Guard. Are you okay with that style of bans, or do you want to see the Maeve taken away here, Gore? I mean, after the way Bugsy played Kanessa earlier, I would not want to see him on another sniper if I'm trying to win a game either. So uh, it makes sense to me to try and get rid of those. Plus, it opens up, I think, a little bit more for your draft without having to worry about certain pressure on certain sides of the map. But they're actually going to ban the Maeve themselves on the side of Na'Vi, so they might potentially be looking for a sniper. This kind of feels, at least to me, Vox, that this is just a bait saying, well, if you, you have to ban the Kanessa at this point in time. Do you go frontline or do you go Cassie if you're Na'Vi here? Right now for Na'Vi, I would probably take the Inara, which is what they're doing here. Uh, they could have gone the Cassie, for, but they're stripping that away from Fnatic right now. Fnatic are left with a few different frontline picks, but none of them quite as successful as the solo Inara has been. So this limits Fnatic to say, like, hey, well, if you're going to play a frontline, you're going to probably have to pick two of them. That's only the time that you found success in this set so far. Well, how about also, again, this one just, the, the numbers in, in itself stand out to me. The fact that Zen came in, 8-0 in the history of these two teams playing up against each other. So far today, it's only won one of the four games so far. It's just one of those testaments, I think, to partially control and how these teams, after playing against them so much, they're recognizing how to deal with them. And honestly, a lot of stuff, and especially for Ascension Peak, it felt like there was a lot not utilized in terms yeah. of the map. I mean, I don't know if I ever actually saw Na'Vi recognize the well side of the map, going over there through the buildings, using those passageways. So... It kind of felt like he was predictable the entire ah, time. That's a good way of putting it. And this map in particular is obviously a lot longer lines of sight, which is, again, why we have both snipers banned away. But you also have the ability to track down those flankers. Now, another yeah. character that we have not seen really be used much in this matchup, again, is that Buck. And uh, this is obviously an area where Buck can come through, uh, you would think, potentially, really for either team. Both teams have played it rather successfully, but it's going to be Cassie and Khan first and foremost for Na'Vi. So obviously we're getting the double front line, a very strong double front line that is as well for Na'Vi. So what I'm expecting to, uh, that Na'Vi are looking for here, they're drafting the Khan early because it's it's more of a neutral pick than anything else. They can go Janos, they can go Meldown for sure, but they know that Fnatic can now also play the Khan to a high degree, so they're stripping that away. As far as damage picks goes for Na'Vi as well, I was expecting the Cassie to come through. That's neutral to Shaolin's neutral. However, if you look for a Bomb King or you look for a Drogos, you're giving the opponents the chance to pick up a counter to that potentially. And if Na'Vi might have gone for the Drogos here, we could see Fnatic just instantly draft into Lian, which is very problematic for them. So Fnatic probably now going to go with a couple more neutral picks. The Maldama comes through, unsurprising there. It was that or the Genos. But if they're going for double frontline, maybe they might look for something else. But instead, it's the Zin prioritization from Fnatic here, which is a little bit surprising as that hasn't been successful for them, Shift. Well, they're not just on top of that. It's the simple fact that Blast champions like Bomb King and Drogos have had such high impact on this map. And you were mentioning that the, the draft for Fnatic on their first three picks was rather neutral. This kind of makes things, I think, a little bit more, I won't say one-dimensional, but it's a lot more linear as far as what Fnatic is trying to do, I think. And just with the way things have been going, I mean, Na'Vi are going, kind of turning things back to what they found successful. They recognized last time, well, we very obviously laid out that we wanted Khan, so they took Khan. And apparently Bugsy can play it really well, so now we don't want you to have that just as much as we would like that. And you're kind of forcing him back onto something that he's been solid on, but you go back to Jag Falls, yeah, your Zen looked great, but your team wasn't able to do anything with it. Mm, that's a very good point. And again, for me personally, whenever I look at and reflect back on the teams that win championships and win tournaments, it comes down to the fact that all five players in the team are playing some of the best Paladins they ever had. It's just interesting for me. So we're, we're going into this... Frozen guard map with no Bomb King, no Drogos, yeah. and then a Zin Buck is our real only strong mobility in the terms of the damage dealers. Right, well, when we look at what was picked up by Navi here as well, they draft the Buck. That pretty much shuts out Drogos here right now. So Leon picked up finally for Fnatic, has inbuilt anti heal. It's good on a more open map like this. It's not a bad pick by any means. It's not necessarily the strongest one they could have gone with, but it suits the terrain that they're playing in. Quick predictions. Fnatic, do they send this to seven or is this the end of the road? Solo frontline, I don't know. I think that Na'Vi have this one. I Gore. feel Na'Vi on this one too. Just having the Anara Khan really kind of leans it back towards their favor. All right. Well, they've had adversity built up over the last couple of games, getting one solid win. They're on Ascension. They're going to have to do it again. Rain Day, pretty here. Take us home. Well, it's a really exciting opportunity here to cast this one because these two teams have so much on the line and they're really ready to give it all in order to get a W here. I want to. Go. I don't want to take us home. I want to take us to game seven. It's always nice because it's really, you know, everybody wants to see a Game 7 in any kind of sporting thing where you're just, like, enjoying the competition. But Navi want to end it right here. 
And do you think they have the tools? I have to see. I think I want to make my decision once I see who's playing what for Fnatic, because I'm really not sure between Tenor and Fish. So it's Fish. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tenor had an incredible game and uh, on the Shaolin a, a little bit. I believe in the Spring Finals on Stonekeep, he just had this absolutely, like, I drop bodies level take over the game and win it. So if he can, and he hasn't been that guy today for Fnatic, a lot rides on him. The young boys need to wake up. Unbelievable here with the Luminary heal already, as well as Mutu on the buck. Phoenix is going to give him some damage amp. This is going to be dangerous. Jera should be in trouble. He's been a little isolated, and that's an early one. Bugsy goes down just like that, and they are just moving in. Bring in the big guns because they are looking healthy. It's the big headshot as well. Those are going to be really, really important to swaying the time to kill for Buck as well as he's only got four ammo to play with, so... Oh, the more oh, oh, you can be, oh. the better. Phoenix is going to lose his life for locking down Theo, but that has to be worth it for Na'Vi. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you get Theo off the board, but again, great trade there by Bittner to make use of that Shaolin early on, but Creatives has always piloted this Cassie. It's just looked better in the hands of Na'Vi than it has in Fnatic today, and unfortunately, Fnatic yeah. are going to have to deal with that, knowing that they just aren't really equipped to play it right now. I will say it has been moved to all day, so Creatives, I don't think, as warm on the Cassie. Maybe that is a bit of a boon for Fnatic. Bugsy forced out. Again, unable to win his duel. And Fnatic give up a lot of map control for it. And playing with range. I like this Phoenix just, just bodyguarding this buck, bodyguarding this Cassian, just amping them as well, ready to make their move. Bugs, he's got to be careful here. He's contributing onto the point fight, which I do appreciate, which they didn't do on the Serpent Beach game that I mentioned so much. But now he's got to be ready to billow, and there it is. He knows the danger is fast approaching, and Theo getting very low. Has a lot of power siphon, but the Commander's Grab's going to go through it. He gets all his Calamity Blast, but he doesn't have a chance to use it. As Nodis Vincere are 99%, and they might just capture this, this one. This front line is simply too too much Yikes. to break. I can't, I can't even see a way through for Fnatic at the moment, especially when that little flank isn't going well for Bugsy. That's really the only avenue they have to exploit. But the way that Phoenix is playing, where he's positioning, he is absolutely comfortable bouncing either to Umbi or back towards creatives on the buck. And there was really, really no holes for Fnatic to exploit. And the thing about Frozen Guard is you kind of got to sit with your, your loss of the objective for a while. You know what I mean? It's just a long push. It usually doesn't end very quickly. You don't have a chance to get right back out there. It's just it's just one of those where when you, when you do lose that objective, I feel like it just hits you a little more. It means a little more. And now Na'Vi in this crucial moment are trying to take advantage of it. Already halfway through, but a big pickup from Fischeko on to Creatives in the back. 153 on the clock. Tenor and Fishy start Ooh. to come alive a little bit. Ooh. Big shots land okay. for young Tenor as he starts to show some signs of life. And at this point, you know, they are the newbies on this squad, Tenor, uh, new to, the newest to this squad. But, I mean, how many lands before, you know, it's it's time to, to, to step up and have, you know, that championship level performance at all times? They go into the finals against Navi at Worlds. They get 0-4. They go into the spring finals here, and they actually win in the best of seven. That through time and space is off the mark. Through time and space, not going to help, but hey, that's a seismic crash that finds two. It just puts them behind some uh, map obstacles, so they can't get followed up on it. Fischeko again trading out onto creatives. Small misstep there, Theo. I like nice use of the power side. Nice angles played. I think one way out for Fnatic this game is just dragging Dang. it out. Don't get converted on here. Stay alive. Don't blow your ultimates if you can help it. Maybe get a point on the board, even if you're not converting. Getting this to late game is going to be a big help for Fnatic. And even not going down 0-2, I think, is maybe even the biggest thing here. If they can just get those Wrecker 2s online, some cauterizes as well wouldn't hurt. And what you just saw about Khan there, I think, is what his, his most powerful thing is. When you play him safely, when you really pick your moments, you poke and prod, you, you don't have to die. I mean, it, it's a very low cooldown when you build into your battle shout. Uh, it's eliminations that you have for this. It's only 10 seconds it's a lot now. Of stay, and man. then you throw your whole shield up. By the time you're done, it's like commanders grab away. You buy yourself another half a second, and you're like, okay, now I can battle shout again. Tenor dies on the way in. Mutu flips the shotgun. He finds a first shot and a first kill onto Young Fishy. He doesn't have a lot more to shoot at. Uh -oh. But that's because they're all dead, and that's not a bad problem to have. 2-0 here. That's looking like it's going to happen, and this does not feel good if you're Fnatic. They've got the reanimate, and this is a big question. Do you let it go? Do you just say, give me comeback mechanic? I do not want to waste resources and go down 2-0. This is so risky. This could be tournament ending, but that is tournament play winning right there from his Bittner, who finds two. Fischeko finds two as well. Finally, unbelievable. We'll go down the overtime will expire, and Fnatic hang in there without having to commit a single ultimate. Na'Vi, they did use the Buckwild. They used the Overpower, but 
Phoenix got that recharged to 62% in a matter of seconds. I mean, he's uh, he's really that been was a literally like one fight. I don't know how he did it. He must have just beat up Theo a lot. Yeah, <laughs> just railed into that Inara who's getting healed up. You know, I, I think that's pretty much the story. Is Bittner has been a big point of conversation during this finals and showing up a little bit there. You saw the aim; it seems to be improving each game, but they have run out of chances for it not to be on point now. Well, let's look at the items here. I want to see how Fnatic have been able to develop and keep themselves in and involved. Fisheko, obviously, he started with death and taxes, so he doesn't need to pick up the Cauterize. He hasn't gone into the Wrecker either. There's not enough shielding from Just Khan to warrant it, so they're going to go ahead and just keep the cut two on the Tenor. And I think that'll be a nice little boon to them. Bugsy's starting to get his morale boost online oh, as well. Oh, that's big. More frequent spites are always a good thing. And finally, something pans out. And that's going to change it all. I mean, there's no healing on the board now. Hey, you know, Mutu can take care of himself, but uh, the rest of these champions have to run away. And they're just going to reset. And this is what is so good about Na'Vi, so good about Fnatic. They're OK just backing off. They'll have another chance as long as they stay alive here to touch the point and try to make something happen. Mm. Uses the scout there at kind of a weird time. Doesn't want I think to that's, a, that's a really information gathering yeah. scout as well to see where Fnatic are spreading out to zone two, if at all, so then Navi can make a 200 IQ approach to this next fight. But that's a 200 IQ play there from Fisheko. A spike holds him down, and then Fisheko finds creatives again. How many times have we seen Fisheko killing creatives in this kill feed? It's been a pretty good game for Fisheko so far. I think he's like eight and two oh. or nine and two at this point. Big, big heal comes through, but Fishy's more than prepared. Tender lands the killing blow, so no reset on the Enlightenment 50% charge, but it's all good. It's all cream gravy for Fnatic right now. It certainly is. Fisheko sliding through into Creative's DMs. And Creative's at this point, it's got him on mute, got him on block, and I don't know, it's just not stopping the onslaught here. Fisheko is absolutely showing up. So is it's Bittner, and those are the two that weren't in the first part of this set. I mean, it's a different game when they come to play. Starting to feel a little bit better, maybe have that good performance, and I think leveling out somewhere. Well, the time and space not missed. quite lined up with where the seismic crash stunned out his targets in the back line. Mutu finds Fisheko. Bugsy's going to retreat to try and bail his team out of this situation, but there's too much bleeding happening already. Na'Vi, a little bit of an inconsequential fight. They're just going back to spend credits at this point. So And, and Na'Vi are so good at giving things up when they need to. They're so patient, and they've got time to be patient. They do not have to rush it. They've, there's no feeling of anxiety, but at this point, if Fnatic go 3-1 up, I think you start to get a little worried. I think you do. And Fnatic, I think, have to make Na'Vi feel worried. They have to make it like, okay, now it's just one game. We've lost our lead. Ooh, ooh, what have we done? We could lose again. And I think that's just by committing a couple of ultimates here. Maybe, maybe an Enlightenment, maybe a, a Heat Haze just to see what you can get. It would definitely sting. And I think there's a lot of that mentality playing in here. On Championship Sunday, Na'Vi holding strong for the time being, though. Two more headshots from Mu2 turns into a double kill and locking down Thiel as well. It should be a fairly easy stagger for them. Oh, my God. And Thiel literally is just going to have to walk all the way to the See, edge of the map. They're even going to burn a cooldown to slow him down. So at this moment, I think as you're Thiel, you just fight them, right? Because you do damage, and eventually they will have to kill you. You don't run away. You just swing. I think they were all kind of just keeping him at arm's length enough. It's, yeah. it's tough to commit on anyone there. Inara, he doesn't have enough DPS to go through with Spunky there watching and Khan healing him up. It's awkward. It's awkward oh, for sure. Oh, he doesn't have enough to go through. I just think you get eliminate. You just get damage credits and try and, you know, I don't know. He has his ultimate charge, so that would be the real main reason he'd want to do that. But uh, trying to get away that far, it's a, it's a long marathon there, and you're trying to speed walk to the end <laughs> for Terminus. Not a lot of mobility. <laughs> Unbe left. even walled him off to, like, keep him on the map a little bit longer. <laughs> Yeah. Staggering has become a much bigger part of the game in uh, oh, yeah. you know, the past year or so. I was maybe even in season two. I mean that's a that's a pretty lengthy one there. Seven seconds on the clock. This is a tall task for Fnatic. They do not make a lot of progress on this offense. Yeah. I mean neither team is looked you know, it's it's weird. They haven't looked dominant in either fashion, right? Navi looked dominant on the push but not the objective. Fnatic looked dominant on the objective but not the push. And so it's been a little bit of a weird one. Creative's finding Bugsy, and that'll probably do it. They still have the healer, so anything can happen. Somebody's got to get a double kill, though, and it just seems like Mutu's been unkillable. Nine streak for him. Uh, just too tanky to take down. Rotating around very, very nicely. He'll lead a nice little stun from Jera, but over time, still a thing for Fnatic. Thiel running out of HP, running out of steam on the objective. He dies, and what little hope Fnatic had dies with him as we head into the third round of game number six. That's a really good shield as well. He saves himself from about 1,500 damage, and that would have killed him. 
So just good instincts. Good play. Fox said, you know, uh, in response to a comment about Khan getting very, very powerful next patch, Fox said, you know, Phoenix is better than 99% of the player base out there in Paladin. So whatever he's doing with this Khan, it's going to be a little bit more extra than what you see in your games. And that's just a great moment to yeah. showcase that. Plus, I think Khan is going to be so much more incredible around coordination. And right. as a solo queue character, I don't know. Eh. Could be rough. Maybe works as a duo coup. Maybe you know finds that oh, like, yeah. Torvald True. niche that you can uh, you know boost up your 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 classic over the moon EV players out there to just carry ranked games. But we'll have to see where Khan ends up out there in the wild. Three percent on the point for Fnatic. So they got their fast Mutu classic Mutu things. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. And he's gonna go into the back line. No more. Uh, music, but it definitely is Jaws, and that's just a great play. I think you just get him off the board, Fischeko. Bittner, I love it. fine kills there. Enlightenment not quite used yet. He's still got that in the bag. Though Creative finds Bittner in the process. Bugsy might... Yes, he's going to be able to get out alive, thanks to the heal from Jera. Ooh, Phoenix could go down pretty staggered here. Uh oh and That would not be good. They're going to go ahead and swing him down, because they already have 85% on the objective. Hold the phone here. Unbe pops his CC immunity, so Bugsy can't spite him. But maybe able to counter him out now with that. And he, I don't know, unless Mutu pulls a rabbit out of a hat. <laughs> or pulls himself or out of this kill. power siphon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The hope for, for, for Nav either. They get absolutely smoked in this objective. 99 to nine, Basically 100 to 0. Unbi just gets in there for a little fun chip capture at the end. But holy crap, what a show from Fnatic. Grand finals here. Fnatic have turned up the heat. They are one point away from sending this to a best of seven. They lost three in a row, but they had a game up advantage from not losing a set this entire tournament in the Masters. And now they are very close with one push, but hey, easier said than done. They've been very bad on pushes here in this map. And uh, a part of it is just breaking down, Nick. What, what do you think that is? as to why they're not able to get anything going. I think once the map starts to tighten back up, once there's a little bit of choke for them to break, it's very tough to push into the Khan plus X. You know, the yeah. Buck, whether it's the Buck, whether it is the Cassie, whether it's Inara even. I mean, she's got so much control. Na'Vi are so much better at controlling space than Fnatic that once space becomes an issue, Fnatic yeah. start to see trouble. I think this is a really nice spot, though. I actually think this is a really nice spot because they're this really... This is where all their successes come from. This yeah, little corner. This little <laughs> moment right here. And you know what? As long as Bittner stays Ooh. alive, he finds a kill. This could be really bad on the side of Na'Vi because they're very extended. But, you know, Bittner knows he's going down. And somehow Na'Vi just... They play it so well. Creative, spunky. They just work these corridors and they just poke and they poke and they play safely. And Na'Vi are going to full wipe Fnatic yet again. A couple of things not landing for, for Tenor either. That would have certainly helped. Getting the man up advantage there. Navi starting to get their ultimates fully charged, and they've got plenty of time to do so. Fnatic, that last fight, I don't know about this fight, hands down, but if, if they are going to try and make a, an attempt at this offense here to put this game away, this is the fight that they would want to ult on. And uh, really just giving so much attention, I think, to Mutu, and, and deservedly. He's been phenomenal, and he's been a, a freak on this buck. He's... Got to keep hitting these headshots, though, if he's going to have the same impact. But he says, Evan, that's what I do. That's kind of my thing, the headshot master. Bugsy going to billow. He forces all the cooldowns there. I think he might have a world left. But other than that, 30 seconds left. Fnatic not looking closer to push this one. And it will probably fall apart. No ultimates invested by Fnatic. Creatives hits the triple kill. Could easily turn into a quadra kill, but they're just going to stagger out tenor. Jeez. Yet again. Jeez, and I like it. Tenor's firing away. Well, I don't know why you run away. I just fire away. Just fire, fire. You want to die quickly, but you give yourself, you know, the opportunity to build some stuff up, get some credits, get some damage credits. It's 3-3, three, three, guys. It's all down to one point fight. And if history tells us correctly, Fnatic have done better on these objectives. They've won two out of three. And everyone has all their ultimates. Jordy hits another five-man ultimate and wins the game. Oh, boy. <laughs> easy call, easy clap. Later, nerds. Now I might really actually call him Creatives, because Creatives is in this match, too. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just, yeah, I, I'd rather you not, Jordy. Get a, get a double, and we can get excited, but we won't have to freak out and lose our vocabulary as well. 17 and 6. Point He's one, the big one. For seconds. Big Mutu. This game around 6 and 9 for Tenor. Again, it's, it's either been bad or all right today, yeah. I think. Except for his start on Maeve, he was 5-1 and one at the Four, beginning of Ascension three, Peak. That's true. Two, Fishy one. stayed, ab uh, you know, about all right this whole game as well. Been, you know, positive 2 or 3.
Oh, the answer for Mutu's buck. So far, it's been rotate away from him and kill the rest of Navi first. And we'll see if Fnatic can make lightning strike not once, twice, but three times. Five ultimates in the tank. Buck firing away, and he's been so aggressive. Mutu, maybe my vote for MVP. Buck still on the mount. He sees the Zen, and he says, no, not today, buddy. That's my trick. That's my shtick. And this is his shotgun as well. It's going to burst the old down. Unbelievable is down as well. Bittner finding that trade. And now Mutu on a nice streak. He recovers. That recovery is enough to keep him alive. Here's the reanimate. Creatives, though, finds Jera. And now Fnatic are without a healer. Denner has to stay alive here a little bit longer. Maybe get out of combat. Start the regen. It's happening. This oh, is no. tournament point. Fischeko goes down really staggered here. Ten more seconds before he's even back in the equation. But look at Theo still capturing away. This is big. Navi are winning this fight handily. However, it's 84%. Navi have 12. There's no comeback mechanic. Fnatic are going to have another chance. They played that oh, well. Tenor. They will have an opportunity as five to aggress here. Not as Vincere's zone has to be perfect. It can. But here's Vasheko. Creatives. Will he get caught out? 11th streak for him. Vasheko no longer with the Enlightenment. If he gets a kill here, he might get himself back up to that 100% a lot faster. Navi playing with just through time and space. Dread Serpent and Spite for Fnatic. They're much bigger, much more impactful ultimates. They lose Theo for nothing. Oh Spite. Onto the objective, Fnatic oh fighting my. for their tournament life. 96%, 99, Na'Vi. Are they going to do it? bugsy has got to go down here. He whirls in. Can he save the day? Unstoppable from creatives. Here's the through time and space, but it's not going to make the difference. It's Bittner. He gets thrown away. The commander's grab. The primus of House Ico says, not today. Not my point, buddy. Not as Vincere are so close to doing it, Nick. I think they might have just done it and breathed new life into their journey in Paladins. They take their first land win. It within the last five months. Since HRX, they have been struggling, but they come out and they put the foot on the throat early, take the first three games against Fnatic, a small stumble on Ascension Peak before they return to form once more and take a 4-3 victory. Fnatic crumbled. They fell apart. We all saw it today. And you know, those last two games, it gave new hope, a new light. But it was Navi's story to tell. The penguin suit comes out. Phoenix, the voice, the lightheartedness, the confidence Navi played like something else today. I mean, when you go up 3-1 with a game given, essentially 3-0, how do you come back from that? I mean, they're gonna, totally even too. Navi are going to win one of those games. It's uh, a catharsis, you might say, for Navi. And just what can you say for Fnatic, who have been so close yet so far on all of these trips, all of these But lands. you won the spring finals. And hey, that's, that's a big one. It's something but it's not what they wanted. But this is the, the more current victory, you know? How yeah. quickly the spring finals gets a little bit diffused. Tenor visibly upset, I think, the with his performance. The disappointment is there, man. It was a great finals, though. It was it was Navi really, uh, I think, usurping the community's maybe thoughts about them in this current meta. Uh, you know, they prove that, yes, they can be world champions. Yes, they can also lose uh, the PPO. But this greatness that I was talking about. They it, did it all. It, you look at a course of a career. You don't look at one moment. And now winning the Masters land and HRX, they've won the two big ones. And that's the story to tell. Well, we'll try to do our best to tell it. Of course, I mean, you hit it on the head there, guys. Uh, how volatile the competitive scene can be. It's not just one dominating story. These two teams, of course, rivals in EU for so long, really since the PPL was incepted. And here again, it's, they, they kind of still trade. One gets the Spring Finals, one gets the Masters Finals. But, Gord, you have to be feeling pretty good about how Na'Vi just played. I mean, just the way they were able to handle that. And there was a lot of sloppiness in that game. Like, you could see that Fnatic was able to capitalize on. That's the thing. These teams play each other so much that things like that are a coin flip when you go into, like, a point fight. All of a sudden, you're like, well, we don't know if we're actually going to be able to win this one or not. Fnatic played it well. They just couldn't close it out at the tail end. They did the exact same thing they had done the previous two rounds that had won, but Navi played it better. Vox, how about this 1K healing differential between these two teams? My it, goodness. It really is impressive when you're equating it sort of a Maldamba with a Terminus to a, a Genos, who sure has a healing sponge of Inara, but also it just goes to sort of say how much this Khan is doing for spot healing, just topping people up here and there, which can yeah. be such a vital throughput when you need it. it. When you need it, but it's also, again, that damage buff, I think was the big takeaway for me when you look back and reflect on Khan's ability to impact not just team fights, not just team comps, but total play styles, especially if you look at how Phoenix played him. And also, well, really, it's that crowd control immunity, right? That's yeah. a really yeah. critical part of it, which when you're playing into a composition like Fnatic's, where they have the Dread Serpent, which can disrupt so much, when they have the ability to stun people with Impaler Arrow, you just shrug it off. You walk forward. Khan <laughs> does so much. Like I mean, he just 
He yells, everyone's like, cool, sweet, let's get aggressive, let's get in there. And I think the way they played that, it obviously was playing a big role, I think, through all of that. Mutu was, I want to say hit or miss with a lot of it. With some of his flanks, he'd get call called out and caught out immediately. And then some of them, he comes around and he gets something like this done. Just good, solid buck shots. Uh, the thing about it, he sits at, you know, over 75,000 damage, 4.9 KD. He really, and for the most part, went unchecked with a couple yeah. of exceptions, like you mentioned. But... This is, again, this play style of Buck that we were talking about as far as, you know, how do you get to this level? Look how much he's not really flanking necessarily. He's chasing down low HP kills, and the other times, again, he's duoed up with that con for that sustain and for, of course, that buff. But uh, we saw a number of times his use of Buck Wild was absolutely huge when it came to shredding down Thiel in specific, who, again, kind of seemed to be the biggest target. I think there was, you know, the difference between this Fnatic Navi matchup versus the one we saw yesterday versus the one we saw back on Wednesday. They found Thiel more often this time around than they did previously. And that was a really big problem. When we saw the uh, the previous upper bracket finals, we actually saw the fact that Thiel was just left alone on this Inara right. on the objective for so long. And this time around, it's like, well, we'll just take them out of the equation. We can, because to a degree, there's this positioning threat of Buck all the while, which is coming through from Mutsu, meaning that the damaged champions can't step necessarily into a dangerous circumstance as they otherwise would do. They've got to be so careful with their positioning that they're not putting out the equivalent damage into the uh, into Navi's front line. So Fnatic at a deficit there, allow Thiel to be focused down, and overall just incredible, perfect play from Navi. So besides just the focus on Thiel, Gore, what do you think was the biggest turnaround for this Navi squad when it comes to finding finally some success against their counterparts? Honestly, a lot of it was changing the way they went into each fight. That was the thing that I really think kind of kept Fnatic on their toes, because it's like, okay, well, they came in this way the first time around, second time, Fnatic win the fight. Third time, they do the same thing, Fnatic win the fight. That last time, they approach it in a similar manner, but it's just some small changes here and there that they needed to make that bring them that success. And that's always been the reason the team has it. If they lose a set or they lose a map, it's always, how did we lose that? What tweaks do we need to make? Make a few adjustments here and there, and then they come back into it looking better. And one of the big things with that as well was the fact that Mutu just didn't really engage on that last point fight. We yeah. saw in the subsequent yeah. two rounds, Mutu jumps in, Dread7 comes out, Enlightenment comes out, yeah. plant and uh, impale into a wall, and you just burn down the buck before they're able to use their recovery and buy time in the fight. This time, Mutu just, again, that in, the entire threat of Mutu Whoop. existing is enough to force a, a full rotation out of Fnatic, right. who just obviously are going, well, the point, the point, the point, but also keep your eyes on Mutu and don't let go, and that enabled Navi to really take advantage of the confusion and sow seeds of doubt in Fnatic. Hold on, Jack. Never let go. <laughs> I don't know why I just got a Titanic burst of flashback in my head. I feel like that that's a good way to... <laughs> so a good work? example of <laughs> these teams. Is one is always reference? the Titanic and one... <laughs> I think we quit. <laughs> Gore, you just pick up the Blue's Clues notebook, find something else in there that we can just dodge between. Here. No, I mean, you can't take anything away from Na'Vi. I mean, this was them coming into uh, the Grand Finals with some adversity behind them, of course, having already been discredited that one round for Fnatic. They looked absolutely incredible throughout everything. And again, even the 4-3 on Ascension Peak, it came down to the wire between yeah. these two teams, as it always seems to do. But, uh, I mean, moving forward, we, we have the summer coming up next. Do you still find that these two teams are going to be the top of Paladins when we get to the Summer Finals? I think in Europe, they're still going to be the top. When it comes to getting to the next Finals and looking at the way things are going, especially between them and NA, I honestly think North America has been catching up every yeah. single step of the way. They're watching what Europe's doing. They're keeping track of them. And even Meta Pusher was saying during their game earlier, after their game earlier, that he's like, I didn't keep up enough with Europe. I didn't know how to draft against them well enough. That's not going to happen again. I'm slightly biased <laughs> being <laughs> European here. You would never have guessed it, I'm sure. Let's go ahead and head over to the Masters champion. Standing by is Rain Day and Pretty Hair with the interview. Determination doesn't quite say the story, guys. You have battled back since Worlds, not winning the PPL, not winning the Spring Finals, going down to Fnatic again and again, but you win when it matters most. How do you guys feel in this moment right now as champions? Hungry. <laughs> Thirsty, actually, but <laughs> thirst for more wins. Nah, feeling great. Like we finally beat well, you Fnatic. Got a, you got a brand new cup. You can, you know, have a nice maybe. Uh, we're gonna fill that tonight. <laughs> we're gonna fill it. I'll chug it. Guys, talk to us about this set. I mean, did you expect to come out and win three games straight against Fnatic? No, 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 no. no. What was the secret? Was it was it them playing rough? Which is you guys just making adjustments in the draft and making sure the Inara was the priority? Uh, the biggest game or biggest word in Paladins: momentum. We came from a loose bracket, and you always like you you drive through the momentum. Mm -hmm. 
So do you think you accredit this to maybe playing more games than they did today, just being warmer? Possibly. Yeah, could be. You said something. Hold on. Possibly. We got oh. the, Mutu, was it maybe the look that you gave to the camera during that set, which now has become a <laughs> meme across our world? Yes. Did that matter? Of course. <laughs> now, have you sent Fnatic into the Shadow Realm, or can they come back out for the summer season of the PPL? They can come back. <laughs> they can come back? Okay. That's a nice. That's a nice guy. Okay. The Terminator, indeed. I mean, any of you guys could have been, you know, superstars here, and I think you all were in your own right. Um, you've all battled through moments of shining and others taking the spotlight. Uh, how does it feel, just from anyone who wants to answer, of having every single person show up today in a big way? I want Spunky Dance. What? No. Bye. <laughs> We're live. Okay, by the way. we're live. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I think everyone's just happy for it because we have, we've been losing to Fnatic over and over again, like you said. And then, it, yeah, we went down in PPL, but so did we before Worlds, and then we won Worlds. Maybe losing helps. I don't know. Like, I, I mean, bouncing back from yesterday because you guys were not happy leaving the building yesterday. No. Talk about the conversation and, and the planning that went into bouncing back in a big way because because they smoked you guys yesterday, but you came through and smoked them today. Uh, it, what happened was just we got annoyed at little things and when we came back we had a good talk uh, we, we laid down on the bed we cuddled and uh, yeah. and then we talked about <laughs> how uh, how we're, we we don't let it happen again that we get tilted basically and I think yeah what I said the momentum to, uh, like drive through from beating Envy helped us a lot uh, to win this this match. Uh, I think if you ask five different people you'd get five different MVP votes for today but Phoenix congratulations you are the uh, Paladins Masters MVP, but I, I think you can all put a hand on that one. You guys played everyone. incredibly. Uh, Shannon, Shannon gets MVP, not surprised. Uh, <laughs> really, really, really big performance from you all. Huge congratulations. What a story from Na'Vi. They win Worlds. A little bit of a rough spell, but you guys bring it back at the Masters land. Congratulations once again. Thank, Thank you. you. I would say completely deserved in the MVP. I mean, the guy goes from not playing any triple DPS comps, playing Khan almost exclusively in Barrack, and then all of a sudden he picks up Leon, he picks up Shaolin. I mean, uh, that's just insane. I mean, it, he's not wrong, though. All five players played at the top of their game today. Oh, yeah, definitely. But the way that I think it was the flexibility overall, you know, when you look at Fnatic, you look at the way Bugsy was kind of flexible for them. That success is the same thing that gives Phoenix that success on Na'Vi, just right. being able to play, hey, we need this right now. Okay, I'll do it. Hey, we need this right now. I'll do it. Just <laughs> being able to pick that up and shoulder that. Being the yes big. man, that's all it takes. And here is a look back to how this tournament played out with the Masters. Of course, the big standout, as you see it, was Space Station Gaming. Got all the way to the winner's semis before they ran into Na'Vi and dropped down to the bottom. And there, well, they finished up their tournament losing to Team Envy. So Brazil coming out and being uh, this undisputed fourth best team, at least currently in the world. Envy will finish in that third place spot after they lost just previously and that 3-1 scoreline. Of course, there's still a lot more coming up, not just with Paladins, with high res. Just later this week, the Spring Fling. May 24th, that'll be airing at 1 p.m. Eastern. Get your checkbooks out. It's all going towards a great cause for Make-A-Wish, and usually something crazy happens, uh, to be completely honest. And if you did miss a couple of these skins, whether you're a Smite or a Paladins fan, well, hey, while you're feeling generous, we're going to give a little bit of rewards back just because, well... It's make a wish. I know you've been wishing for that Fernando skin. I know I have. And, of course, more events past that. How about DreamHack? That's what we're doing for the Paladins World Championship, Smite World Championship, and both iterations of the Console World Championships. That's going to be at DreamHack Atlanta a little bit earlier in the year. It happened in November 16th through the 18th. But how do you get there? You might be wondering if you're a player or if you just want to be continuing to be a spectator. We've got the summer split coming up starting just near the end of the month on May 29th. That'll be accumulated with a summer LAN that will, of course, will have another uh, champion be crowned. And here is that summer format as we're looking through. The console series is going to be back once again, as well as the global series and, of course, the PPL. And that schedule as far as broadcasting, well, it's a little bit different than what you might be used to. It's still Monday through Friday. There's nothing on the weekends. We're strewing about the PGS and PPL matches throughout Tuesday and Friday, kind of rotating with two different games from EU, NA, EU, NA. A little bit of a pinstripe effect there. But my goodness, that has been one heck of a coverage. Final thoughts for you, Gar, in the week. I mean, it was awesome being able to see these guys not only come in, just hang out with all the players, but watching them come to LAN and just increase their play. I feel like it always gets better every LAN, every time they play against each other. So this next split is going to be phenomenal.
and end results aside, the best part of the LAN for me personally is just the sense of camaraderie which comes through from teams all around the world. We're all in this for the same thing. We're all in this because we love damn good paladins at the end of the day. Love damn good paladins. And hey, happy birthday to Mudu as well. And uh, well, you know what? We're going to get out of here. I got a birthday to celebrate myself. Today is my last day of being 20. I turned the dirty 30 tomorrow. We'll see how dirty that ends up being. But I've been I hold shift for Vox, for Gore, and of course, Rain Day Pretty here. Tigris, if you're watching, I hope you're enjoying your cruise and all the admin staff behind the scenes. This has been I hold shift and the rest of the paladins crew saying, until next time, we hope that you keep holding it down.